Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. We gave Paris and Jeff the week off for the holidays. I hope you're enjoying uh, the holiday season with family and friends. And I'm so glad that you're listening to this very special episode of This Week in Google. What a year 2023 was. We are going to take a look back at some of the highlights and lowlights of last year next. It's our best of 2023 on This Week in Google. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 748, for Wednesday, December 27th, 2023. A look back at the year. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. I am, uh, I'm all alone. But uh, I'm sure Paris and Jeff are having a wonderful holiday. I hope you are, too. And I'm so glad you joined us for our annual look back at 2023. What a crazy year, uh, this one. I would say, if nothing else, this was the year of AI. Microsoft uh, said, we're going to put another $10 billion into chat GPT. They, early in the year, we didn't really know what that meant. Uh, I had found a really nice search tool that was not going to live the <laughs> live the year out, called Neva. Take a look as we go back to the early part of 2023 and kind of early AI at the same time. Speaking of AI, uh, we talked about this a little earlier on uh, Microsoft, uh, on Windows Weekly. Microsoft has Big deal. said it's going to put ten billion dollars into Open AI. Uh, the the actually information had a very good article about this because the way the deal works, um, uh, Microsoft, Elon Musk, a number of other people, uh, uh, financialized OpenAI, but there is probably uh, at this point no likelihood that OpenAI will ever go public. So there'll be no easy way for them to get the money back. So they actually have a deal in, in with Microsoft's in, initial investment of a billion dollars and now uh, their increased investment, they've made a deal so that Microsoft uh, gets 75% of the profits of OpenAI until the principal investment is paid back. After that, 49% until it hits a theoretical cap because there's no there's no exit possible for Wait OpenAI. Wait a second. Well, well but, so they're supposedly investing $10 billion at a $29 billion valuation. Yeah, yeah, there's others. Five percent. Yeah. Well, I don't understand. Uh, you're talking to the wrong person if you want to understand how finance works. Well, so why wouldn't it go public? Um, because the whole point. So it's my understanding. It's the whole, open. Yeah, they want it to be nonprofit. A, but the, the yes, the whole point is we want the development of an artificial, a general artificial intelligence to be done in public, openly and not in secret by a big company like Google right. or by the Chinese government. So the funders of this said this needs to be an open process. <laughs> and I think probably their charter forbids uh, an act exit uh, through sale or IPO. So, so I've got a question. Yeah. For you. I'm seeing these stories over and over and over again saying, Google better watch out. Google's doomed. Google's... I don't see that. A, I, a chat gpt is a rotten way to do search because it makes up things and that's what it does uh b google's working like crazy on this stuff and has been devoting huge resources to this the last n years uh why would this look like a a, a you know worry wart death knell for google i just don't get that am i crazy if they don't keep up it is i i think the worry is that you're basically, and I just dropped something in the notes next to this story just for fun because it's super Thank nerdy. Yeah. Um, and addresses. Uh, this yeah. is from Stephen Wolfram. Credibility. Who is yeah. certainly so an start reading now while I talk because because yeah. it takes a while. Um, but I think the worry with Google is that in. I don't know, Jeff, you're old enough. You'll remember. Remember uh -oh. when you had to do like Bayesian search into Google? You know, you had to, to pluses and quotes mm -hmm. and all that fun stuff. And then one day yeah. you stopped because you could. And this Boolean. is kind of the Boolean. snippets thing. Yes. Boolean, Boolean. that's it. Yeah, yeah, Bayesian, yes. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, Bayesian's related. It's statistical, but okay, yeah. 
Let me pull out my slide show, slide bar, slide, what do you call it? Rule. Slide rule. Rule. Slide rule. Anyway. Slide bar. So I think <laughs> okay. the idea is This is, is going to be the misnomer episode, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the Malaprops edition of This Week in Google. That's it. Malaprops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the idea is that if you can just ask GPT chat something and it has access to all the information, much like Google had, then it's basically going to do the same thing. And well, that's that's all it is. You but, didn't, but, but, you didn't you know, notice. You didn't notice. But I did that search in a new search engine I've been I've been using and actually really like founded by Google executives. It's called Neva, N double -E, e V A. It's not free. Because their point was, we don't want to ever have ads supporting. We don't ever have to do tracking. We don't want to ever have to sell any information. So for five bucks a month, you can use Neva Pro. That's There's fair. a free version. Oh, and if you want to add to this. Oh, go ahead. Well, I just want to point out, remember I read you about the key server ceremony. That, that document I read to you is actually generated by something they launched this week called Neva AI. And, and you know how Google does the beginning of a search with a little snippet, which it usually takes from Wikipedia. They're trying to do, and this is something I think chat GPT. Oh, they and, put citations in. And they put that, sites in and they take it from multiple sites. That is a big deal. So this is the yeah. threat so, to Google, right? Yeah, no snippets, well, but actual generate. Because chat GPT is very good at this summarizing content. That's one of the things it does seem to do very, very mm -hmm. well. Kevin turned me onto this and I'm still looking at it. It's presearch.io. So if you check that out, because that is a decentralized search engine. Ah. Um, so it is, that perk and I'm trying, up. well, no, no, I just, I mean, it's like, since you're talking and researching search engines, this is, I, again, I, he told me about this this morning. So I was just looking at it like, Oh, it's powered right by blockchain. Gotta be good. Uh, well, yeah, so that's that's why I was like, and okay, you wait, buy and to sell tokens? PRE tokens. Yeah, no, no. Hold okay. on. Oh, boy. But, okay. but I do like, well, I think that's to incentivize people to contribute. And yeah, in order to do this. So the way Neva works is fully centralized, but they have been spidering for five years now. They were started uh, some years yeah, ago. Yeah, wow. And so they're not taking, as DuckDuckGo does, Bing searches and, and anonymizing them or anything like that. They have their own server. Uh, I mean, their own spider in their system and their own uh, database. I've been using Neva for a week and I find it's actually as good as I'm happy with it. It's slow. It's the only thing. Google, we forget how fast Google is. But Google mm -hmm. search results are like that. And we're so used to that with Neva where you wait a second for a search result. But I think the search results are quite good. Well, so decentralized is interesting, but boy, blockchain and, 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 and cryptocurrency. Yeah. Eh. What were you saying, Ant? Well, I assume with the five dollars a month, they're going to put that more towards their their uh, resources as far as being able to to crawl a little bit better as well. As That's the, the whole point. Power, yeah, I know? mean Google yeah. Google monetizes by selling ads, uh, so you have to monetize. Search isn't free, right? So right. what? If, so that's kind of the question posed by Neva is, well, what if? Uh, what if instead of doing that, we charged our users uh, for it? Harry McCracken has a good article uh, at Fast Company about the beginnings of um, of Neva and how you know they're who they are and their philosophy. It's former Google executives. Uh, this is from Fast Company uh, last year, June 29th, twenty twenty one, and it's a number of uh, it's uh, Sridhar Ramaswamy and Vivek oh. Ragnathan. You know these guys? I know Shri I know Shrivar. Yeah, he was uh he was a long-time Google uh executive. Um and uh basically they they got funding for uh, from uh, Greylock and Sequoia for 77 and a half million when they started a few years ago. Uh they more than 30% of the roughly 60% person staff is uh, ex-Googlers including Udi Manbar, former head of Google Search. And Darren Fisher, one of the inventors of Chrome. So that made me kind of think, well, okay, these guys know what they're doing. And I think it's an interesting experiment. So what if we did search? So what would just show more plain vanilla Google search? How does it? Uh, give up? me a search term and I'll do it. Um, Matthew well, McConaughey. Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Now, first thing is, I don't know how to spell it, but fortunately it has autocomplete. <laughs> so okay. there you go. Well, that's an important thing to know. <laughs> now, you saw it was a little slow popping it up. 
It has the Wikipedia knowledge graph on the right, as does Google. But here's the AI beta containing information from Wikipedia, IMDb, the Spanish Wikipedia, for some reason, page six, which, as you know, Jeff, is a, a celebrity oh. gossip site and grunge.com. But instead Scroll of... Scroll down now. Okay, and then here's a here's the Wikipedia, here's IMDb, here's news, there's a news bar, but unlike Google, uh, you know, this is not, this is just kind of a search result, not a paid search. There's no paid results. Here's videos, all YouTube. Uh, here's his Twitter, here's biography.com. He was at the White House doing a press conference? What? Well, there you go. Oh, See, you've learned something. In June, in June of last year. June. Oh, okay. June. Yeah, you remember I, that? I, I, I remember that as January. That. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, you remember that. Yeah. I was like, okay. Here's a picture of him with Adele. I mean, I don't know. I find I, him so obnoxious. Okay. You you still have, like Google, the videos uh, tab, the personal, I don't know what that means, tab. There are no personal results. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, that's for, I, oh, Neva will search my content as well. So you okay, can I add your. Glad you have nothing yeah. about him and your stuff. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here's images. Uh, here's a map. There is no Matthew McConaughey map. <laughs> uh, Thank goodness. I, I guess that's a relief. It's fair. And here's news about Matthew McConaughey. Um, but see, in, in my settings, I can add... By the way, with the five bucks, you also get a, a, a free Dashlaner LastPass account and Bitdefender, <laughs> which is an antivirus. Uh, I would say to choose Dashlane, not LastPass. Um, and you can also add your own uh, stuff to search. So uh, I think this is really, really uh, interesting. Um, I've yeah, I've connected we'll it, with that. I've connected it to Google Dropbox, so it'll search my Dropbox. Slack, it'll search my GitHub, and I've connected it to my Notion. So the search results oh. can also come from my stuff. I think that's very Do interesting. Do you pay more to choose more apps? No, uh, this was part of the five buck. Uh, okay. pro account. There is a free account that you can't do that with. Um, but I was glad. And look, see over on the right here, here's my calendar. Here's some documents today. You know, there's some interesting stuff in here. These are from Google drive, all of them. Um, I think this is really, um, you know, they have an incognito search. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, why would they need that? Um, that's a good question. Uh, because the search is, as you saw, has information. Uh, it knows about me. I am logged in. So if you wanted to say, I just want a vanilla search that doesn't know about me. Oh, okay. I it guess doesn't take into know. account my. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't find those those TikTok bathing suit pictures that. Are and Jeff, don't phones. worry. There is a light mode. Oh shoot. I just have dark mode turned on. I hear I'll turn on light mode and make Jeff happy. Oh, so much better. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> let there be. Yeah. So for instance, I turned on location. Because that's an important part of Google search. Like if I search for pizza, I wanted to choose yeah. pizza parlors in my neighborhood, right? Not, not, uh, not something across the country that I can't get. And there, oh, I look. chose Pizza Hut. Well, and that would look to be an ad, but it's not on Google. I'm not sure why. That's it's, interesting. Why did that end up first? Yeah, that is interesting. Here's what I really want, which is in my local map with local. Which pizza one is good places. there, guys? These are all good. Old Chicago's deep dish. Acres quite like good, that. thin thin crust. Would not Please go to Pinkies. Pinkies is where everybody goes after the little league game. Oh. <laughs> and I would definitely a lot. do not go to Pizza Hut. Yeah, why is that showing up? I that's weird. That's, okay, well, that, so I could say that's prefer funny. less Pizza Hut. <laughs> I've just thumbs <laughs> I've just thumbs down that result. I mean, they they probably have a lot of SEO juice. Right? I would imagine. I mean, that still counts for this. It's interesting. Here's an Encyclopedia Britannica article. But notice every Domino's. single result, I can say, give me less or more of that. I don't want any Domino's. In Domino's? My, no Domino's in my pizza results. P Domino's is actually a very tech forward company. I'm just throwing that Are out. Are they? If they had good pizza, oh, yeah. I'd be interested. Uh, <laughs> no. What, what do you mean tech forward? Oh, you know, they just bought um, a whole fleet of electric TVs, vehicles. Right? For, de yeah, for yeah, delivery, all yeah, a bunch of bolts. Yeah, they did. That's cool. Yeah. They did. They also do a lot with IoT implementations. They've got LoRaWAN for it, networks in several of their franchisees. franchisees yeah. The people who own their franchises. Franchisees. Um, they oh, they actually cool. are. Yeah. 
I don't know why, but they also give me the 10 best pizza places in Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> okay, now, now, now go to Google and do the same search with Okay. Location. With pizza? Yeah, with pizza. Okay. Or Matthew McConaughey. No, no, no Matthew McConaughey. No, We're no. Enough of that. Ugh. Now, I am logged what into Google. What is your beef with Matthew McConaughey? Oh, he's just obnoxious. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I love Matthew McConaughey. Like, all right. I like him. Here is the same map with different pizza places, including Magdalena's Savories and Sweets and Mama J's. But no, uh, no pizza, pizza hut. Oh, but Old Chicago's the first one. Yeah. Both and them, that was yes. the first one in your other one. It's yes. good, but yeah. not the best in town. Here's Pizza oh, there's Hut. There's Pizza Hut. Here's Domino's. Domino's they're so yellow. big, right? Because they're yeah, going to show that's, up. That's, yeah, that's it. Look at this, though. Oh, Google look, does nutrition, nutrition facts. facts. Oh. Yeah. oh, that's, that's interesting. That's good. That's a Google thing. I like Man, seeing comp. All I can so say is I like seeing competition. I do, too. But I think, I think the Google search is still better. Well, um, I don't for search now. for pizza all the time. Let me know, search just, for... one example. Oh, how about... Let's search for Gutenberg. Okay. Because they're, uh, you know. You might get Project Gutenberg. Well, I'm so not going to search for Johannes Project. Gutenberg? Yeah, that's the number one. Oh, should I do Johannes? I Johannes Gutenberg, yeah. Johannes Gutenberg, and let's do it on uh, Neva. There's the Google oh. result. Let's do the Neva. Oh, no. My no. eyes. It's, it's, I know. <laughs> it's I know. so bright. <laughs> All right. Well, just for the purposes of this show, I'm going to leave it. In, I know it's so bright, isn't it? A Both German blacksmith, goldsmith, whips. and painter. All right. Here, look at this is the AI thing. Okay, let me read that. Let me see if it's good or not. Uh, yes. Interestingly, it got this from thoughtco.com. Well, it's not really true anymore. The number two is not really true anymore. Okay, but you know where it came from now, which is biography.com. Uh, his masterpiece, first was book. This is Jeff as a uh, author of a of a well known book about oh, Johannes he, Gutenberg. Here's the title page. <laughs> Just got this. Let's see it. Let's see it. Doves. The Gutenberg parenthesis. Isn't that, isn't that font beautiful? That's Which doves. font? Doves. Oh, that's the that one that doves Fleischman Bible. got you. Nice. It's gorgeous. Just love that. Nice. It's so lovely. that's Neva. Let's look at Google's uh, Google's results here. Lots of pictures. Born in Mainz. Uh, the Wikipedia article is the primarily knowledge uh, graph here. Um, printing Press, World History, Thought Co. also, Biography.com. I think they're comparable, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, except for one's in light mode, one's in dark mode. <laughs> but that's <laughs> so we can tell. As a migraine person. I know. I don't like, like it either. I'm much. with you. All right, wait a minute. Let me, uh, let me just you did that to make me like Neva better. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. I was, you know. Just blatantly, uh, uh, now I can't. Now I can't find where I said it. Oh man, huh. I'm stuck huh. with it. Oh Jeff, Newman. So you think comparable yeah, as a Gutenberg expert? Not yeah. roughly the same the, result. The write-up is interesting. All Just saw circuits. myself over Ant's head uh, in I the studio. I can't help you there. I don't know why. Ants got Are you a having very, a stroke? Ants, oh, you know, <laughs> over his head. I just want to compare the, the size of picture. Ant's head to your oh. head. Oh, there is a picture. It's right up there. It's right up there. I put that uh, beautiful dark haired picture that? of you. Who's that person? Floating. Now we can't hear Leo. <laughs> 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 it shows malapropism and like At last. fails. At there last. Back. We can't hear now Leo. All right. I'll I'll have more about Neva at some point. I just I think yeah, it's, it's very interesting. interesting. I wonder how it's doing business wise. Business. Uh, they just added the uh, the uh, chat uh, the you know AI stuff. They're not using Chat GPT. Although, and we were talking about Open AI, they have said now they've finally figured out. Well, we better start charging for Chat GPT. And much like Dolly, uh, they're going to have a premium version that you get credits and you pay for credits. Um, but the day, so, so this is what, uh, so I saw a librarian in, in Mastodon come in and say that she had more than once now, she's had students come to her and say, I got this from chat GPT. I would like to read the things that are oh, referenced. I love here. that. Yeah. No, wait. Chat GPT had the people were real, but every reference was made up. <laughs> every book title was made up. What? Okay. okay. Yes. That's terrible. That is oh, one man. thing, by the way, Neva. That's why the footnotes, they, they have it right there yeah, that's where why we got important. the information. I think that's really important. They, so this is the real problem with ChatGPT, and they've never asserted anything is factual. Not at all. 
Not at all. It, it's a word predictor. That's you, it. You shouldn't assume that. No. I so love it that it can predict where... non-existent sources. <laughs> that's that's great, isn't it? This should, yeah. He should write this book. He just doesn't know it yet. This uh, is where the Wolfram Alpha thing comes into play because he talks about being able to teach chat GPT yeah. using Wolfram Alpha. Oh, that's interesting. As it explains it. Um, like, so you, you can do the search in two places. And then when chat GPT feeds you weird stuff, you pull in the Wolfram Alpha right. stuff. Well, I'm having a hard time saying these words. You brought a friend. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I brought a friend, but I don't know if it's in the, the best of news. Not in the best of times. Um, so we talk. So I sort of feel bad. <laughs> well, no, actually, I'm really glad because we talk a lot of, we've been talking for the last couple of weeks about Big layoffs in tech, you know, 12,000 people at Google, 11,000 at uh, Microsoft, Facebook. All right. Uh, but there's no face to it. And I always try to say, you know, layoffs are always terrible. And then we always talk about why and the companies and so forth. Let's bring a face to it. One of the things I noted, uh, I've been noticing over the last couple of weeks on Twitter is as Google lays off people, I'm seeing farewells on uh, Twitter and uh, Mastodon from Google engineers, many of whom have been, have been there for years. And this kind of, it's not a... <laughs> Stacey, are you wrapping presents? <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. I have cough drops and I just had to, I was putting them away. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's are funny. you that I'm, person I'm really sorry. in the movie theater who takes 10 minutes to open <laughs> the package? Are you that Holy person? Cow. Would you no, like, I was I was like, I need to put the cough drops away so I can do my job. But you, I'm also you, like, but the you, cough drops you, make me feel better. Would you like a junior mint? They're curiously refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> just don't just don't drop it into the open corpse of Richard Hay, okay? Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Richard Hay is here. He is the face of all of those layoffs, Google cutting 12,000 jobs. And uh, I, first of all, I don't want to say condolences, but I'm sorry that it happened. How long were you at, at Google, Richard? Uh, well, I was at Google uh, from uh, July of 2007 to Friday. Well, and technically we're still employed until March 31st. You, oh. you uh, learned of this in a very um, unpleasant way. Yeah, they uh, they did send a, a you know a company script uh, you know form letter type of you try to log in and it redirects you to a, I'm sorry to inform you that Ooh. your dog died. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that was but actually I heard about it before that email I saw because one of the software developers in Belgium uh, sent me a message on LinkedIn and said that he saw that I was impacted and was I okay and I didn't even know there was a layoff yet. Oh, son of a. Well, but see, you'd rather hear it from a friend. Okay. Then, then the script that you get, and I and I later asked him how did he even know that I was impacted, and he said they had created a group inside of Google of all the people that were impacted, and he was just looking through usernames and he saw oh. mine. And so that's how he knew it. So me. there was a spreadsheet somewhere or something. So Richard, well, I, they I, had... I guess throughout the course of the day, they actually blocked access because they didn't want people doing that. But he got it. He got it before they blocked it. Right? Time zone. Richard, I had, I had breakfast with a friend at Google's by happenstance yesterday. And he said that his boss has hundreds of employees and didn't know that it was oh, my boss didn't. high that it was done. Your boss. Yeah, it know. was, it was, yeah, my boss. I mean, I, I called him, I said, did you, and I just had a meeting with him on Tuesday. I mean, you know, and there was no inkling <clears> of anything <throat> like this on the horizon. Right. So it was, the decision was made on a whole nother level. Than us, right? So layoffs are always unpleasant. Google, uh, like a lot of tech companies, had done a lot of hiring uh, during the pandemic. And in my mind, uh, I thought a lot of this was just kind of retrenching after excessive hiring. And Wall Street Journal said something that Google had increased its uh, uh, head count by like 47%. I mean, so I was very surprised to see how many senior people were let go as well. What were you working on, Richard, uh, before before the end? So, uh, like most recently, I was working on some internet uh, edge operation troubleshooting for cloud customers. But probably more interestingly, right before that, 
uh, I was working for about 18 months on uh, scaling and deploying uh, the backend infrastructure for Starlink, uh, SpaceX Starlink, the space internet thing. Right? Oh, cool. Right. Now that they eventually cool. figured out how to do what we were doing for them without us. So they moved off of Google's backend, but uh, but for but that was pretty cool to work on that. Right? Nice. So uh, for fiscal year, this is from the Wall Street Journal, ending in September 2019. I'm sorry, beginning September 2019 to September 2022. That one year period, uh, Amazon doubled employee count. This is because of pandemic, I think. Microsoft went up 53 percent. Alphabet up went 57 percent. That's a huge growth. Meta 94 percent. So. And my initial reaction, as I said to this, was, well, yeah, the pandemic's over and there was a big boom and now there's some retrenching. Did they explain to you why you were cut uh, as opposed to somebody who had been hired in the last year? So that uh, was that is very unclear. I don't know what rubric they used to heuristic to determine who it was. And, and I got to admit, I, I had seen the same news that everyone else had been seeing about Amazon laying off people and Microsoft laying off people and and all these articles saying oh well Google is you know people are worried about layoffs at Google uh, but I, I I wasn't worried about it but apparently I should have been <laughs> so, well normally hmm. they'd go well, to your boss and do some uh, stack ranking or something as brutal as that sounds and say well who can you lose but your boss didn't even know about this right doesn't Google do a lot not via algorithm but I imagine and then my hunch is they tend to get rid of people who not are replicable. I'm not trying to say that you are rec replicable, but who have sure. who have roles that are replicated across the con uh, company. Yeah, and then they're, they're you might be just. Yeah. Or, yeah. And you might just be the more senior and paid the most, whereas someone uh, who's yeah. just come. I mean, that. the longer you've been in a job, unless you're like in charge of things, you're at a risk because you're expensive. Right, and they probably can find someone else that does what I do for less money, right? I know that happened to me. Is the stuff you were working on deprecated? Maybe that had Team. something to do with it, too? I mean, maybe they didn't want to pursue that line. And I know at Microsoft, all the HoloLens people are gone and the virtual reality people are gone. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, by the beginning of my career, I worked on, uh, like, building and deploying and developing all of the data center switching equipment that's in every data center in the world. Uh, so I worked on that for about eight years. And so, uh, but then I left that team. So lately when I did go to the Starlink thing, uh, that was more operations and not as much engineering. And then it's, it's possible that, you know, that I, and I had even been looking around for other opportunities to go back into engineering. Uh, so it's possible I just wasn't a good fit for that uh, role right. and that they just, something in that made them decide, well, we can do the op stuff with, you know, other people and not, we don't need him. I don't know. How hard was it to switch roles like that in, in Google? Uh, I was at about, I, I switched uh, different roles about six times. So, I mean, yeah. I worked on the platforms team for about eight years, but then I decided I, I wanted to live in Texas because uh, my wife, uh, she uh, said, my friends are in Texas. My mom's in Texas. My sisters are in Texas. And we're going I'm, to Texas. I'm going <laughs> and back to barbecue. <laughs> Well, because I was in Texas when I was recruited in 2007 and they forced me to go to California. So then, uh, you know, I and so I did switch to Google Fiber for a couple of years because uh, they said, hey, do you want to live with your kids? Which is a strong pitch. Because um, that's and, when uh, I met you is when you were with Fiber. Right. I was with Fiber at that time. And then and then I went and uh, once uh, I, I decided to go and work in a team that was doing private LTE stuff and deployment of sensors to detect aircraft carriers. Uh, on the east and the west coast, uh, so that was uh, so that's a pretty fun thing. You're in Mountain View, on a promo committee deciding who lives and who dies, and you run into one of your old buddies, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to help me detect aircraft carriers?" And I'm like, "Well, can I live in Austin?" And they're like, "I don't care where you live." And then it's click, 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 and you're on that team. So it's not that hard to switch teams, and that's one of the other reasons why I had no real concern that this sort of because they've never done anything like this. No, mm -hmm. so. this is the largest layoff in Google history. Uh, Richard, you, you before we got on, and and Leo likes to keep things live so that we can everybody can see what's going on back in the, back behind the scenes. You were telling me you were talking about the difference in culture at Google over the time you've been there. 
I'd be really interested to, to describe life at Google over the time that you've watched it. Oh yeah. Well, when I started, there were 7,000 employees, Jeez. you know, so it was, uh, it was a few years, a couple years after the IPO. And, and I think every resume was personally approved by Larry Page and, you know, that, you know, you would get into the company and it was just, and it wasn't all, you know, jumping on trampolines. It was, you know, it was, it was actual real work. And in 2010, there was an incredible meeting where Eric Schmidt stood up and said that because the company was doing so well financially, they wanted to share that largesse and that benefit with the employees. So he said everyone was going to get a 10% raise. Wow. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, like we're going to do a spin in or like give these people bonuses, but just them, this was across the board. Right. And that, and, and so there, that was, and I was in the room when he said that, uh, so that, and that was in Mountain View and, and it was just an amazing, and he even said, he thought he'd never been able to say anything like that at any, when he was the CEO at Sun or any of the other places at Nobel, I think. Uh, so that was an amazing opportunity for him. But now part of the reason was because there were only 27,000 employees at that time. That that's why they were able to, now he couldn't say anything, you know, they're not going to say anything like that, you know, now. Uh, so it, then just contrasting that with what happened on Friday, right? It, you know, that's kind of like what all the other companies do. Yeah. 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 A friend of mine said that who, who used to work at Google, he left some, some years ago. He said, oh, people don't understand that Google is highly hierarchical and like the Marines. Would you agree with that? And that there's there, the, the, the structure started coming in. And, and Schmidt always said our biggest challenge is going to be we get too big, which I think is part of the problem here. I, I think that is part of it. Like, so one of the senior vice presidents is a Swiss fellow named Urs Holzig. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Urs used to run the platforms team that I was on. And I actually, he was kind of, brutal but he would, he, he, he would have these meetings every six months where you had to justify your product's existence from a business case or he would kill it what's wrong with that well that i'm not saying that's bad i'm just saying well you know i mean you have a hearted that, aunt i'm just well, saying no, no. Well, look no, you're right we, we you're are right. we've said at least i've said a gazillion times on here google needs to be more focused and just yep. being all add with this product and that product that's why stuff is dying off because there's no focus that sounds well, like he was is, focused urs is on the infrastructure team so yeah this was on the infrastructure side no, right no i'm just saying in yeah. general in general just the approach of all right R this right, isn't right. helping us. Let's right. trim the fat. And no, I, I'm just saying that you would kind of go in the micro kitchen of the guy that just, you know, spent two years of his life that he'll never get back. <laughs> you know, so I mean, you yeah. know, so th there were some casualties of this sort of yeah. thing. But uh, but yes, I do agree. I miss I miss that whenever they whenever he got promoted to a level where he wasn't involved in the day to day management anymore. And they backfill with a bunch of like academics who are fake it till you make it guys. Oh, and then, uh, and then you basically get things that should have died, but didn't die because they're like, oh, well, we have the money to do this. Let's do this. See? So, and, then, and then Ruth Porter. <laughs> You're not talking about Diane Green, are you? I, I, I'm not going to say anybody in particular <laughs> that I might be talking about, whatever. It's like, hey, I miss Google Plus, Richard. Jeez. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, I had 12,000 followers on Google Plus. Oh, uh, Google but, Plus. Uh, Bring yeah, it but, back. Yes, I miss it. It was a nice platform, but. What uh, what was what's your sense of how they went about this? Do do you have any idea, or was it a black box? You know, I I'll be honest, I have no idea because obviously I did not expect this, yeah. you know, to to happen. Uh, I mean, like I have like about a thousand of these little tip notes that I write to myself about how to do things that were tied to Google Keep on my corporate account oh, that shoot. I'll never be able to access. Oh, again. No. Oh. Right. So, I mean, you know, if I'd have known this was going to happen, I would have like, because that's, there's no company secrets in there. It's right. just me telling myself, oh, let me, now me tell two years from now me how you type in the thing to do the thing. You know, when is that, my mother-in-law's birthday? Oh, no. No, that's right. good. So, no, I, I understand that. I have a note somewhere that says how to set up an SSH public private key set logins. I can does, never remember. That is kind of like a get out of. I can never remember. So I can have it in a note and then I just pull up that note. And uh, so I understand that that's a, they gave you no time to, uh, to do anything. I guess they don't want you writing nasty uh, farewell. Not well, I mean, you know, I think that Sundar even said that from the reason that they did it like this was because obviously Google is protecting a lot of very private information. Yeah. 
yeah. of, of, yeah. of billions of consumers and they didn't want any, you know, whatever they think of you as an individual, they don't even want the risk of someone. Yeah, we do the, we do the same. Do we do the, I mean, I hate to say it, but if we've had to fire people, we've done the same thing. You cut, you cut their account access off. Pretty as, standard operating yeah, procedures as quickly, for most yeah. places. As quickly as you can. Uh, yeah, and you know, I mean, this has got to hurt. What it, you said, you, you have some severance time. Did they, did they make you sign? Apparently they didn't make you sign an agreement not to talk to the media. Oh, I, I well, I haven't seen that agreement yet. We're not <laughs> <in> media. <laughs> okay, good. So, okay, so, good. So, uh, yeah, so I think they are. So since I'm technically an employee still, I mean, I think there's like a thing they ask you like when they do this. What are they going to do? Severance. Fire you? <laughs> They could take right. away his. Co could they take away your cobra or something? I mean, they might be able to do something. I mean, obviously, I don't want to be. And just as a legal disclaimer, I am not trying to give away any secret squirrel thing. Yeah. No. Uh, no. No. And, like and in fact, we're not trying to get those out of you at all. Uh, we're just trying to put a human face I, on something that is so inhuman <laughs> uh, and so easy to report on. But when you say twelve thousand people lost their jobs, it's uh, that's a lot of people going through a lot of hell. And uh, I think it's, I really wanted to have you on so that people could understand what, it, what, so what's your plan now? What are you going to do? Well, I, I will say I've been incredibly humbled by the response of so many of my friends that when they found out uh, that they've reached out to me to offer me other opportunities Good. to do new things. That's awesome. So, so that does dull the sting whenever, you know, you're being reached out by other people to say, Hey, you know, do what you do, just do it for this other outfit. Right. But uh, and there are a couple of really interesting opportunities uh, there. Um, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to go work for the Saudis, but you know, <laughs> you know, whatever. You're not gonna... on air. On the, <laughs> other, on the other hand, uh, they got some money, and if they called and you know, <laughs> what what is your anyway. your, I mean, sounds like your skills, uh, particularly in networking? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I have worked on so, and one of the things there is really no substitute for experience. Right. So essentially, I've seen many, many, many things fail. So that that right. allow, that that allow, and and I don't know if you're familiar with this, but like all the technology companies have what I I just you know proverbially call the WTF meeting. Yeah. Where whenever you have 500 switches crash and uh, 70,000 servers go offline instantly and without warning, you you have you have this meeting where the service owners that are negatively impacted by this event are, they come in and they look at you. And the way I like to describe it is like, it's like in the, the original Superman with the guys on the wall, you know, where they're yeah. all like yeah. guilty, guilty, <laughs> guilty. And then, and then, you know, it has to be unanimous Jarrell. And then he lights the stick and they're in the phantom zone. Uh, you know, anyway, uh, so it's like that, you know, in the meeting and then they say, dude, and then most Google services are, are actually dual home. So that, you know, your Gmail is in two clusters and your calendar right. is in two clusters. So if a cluster dies, you can still access your email. So most users don't notice that right. even something bad happened. So you can have this postmortem and something horrible happened. But since nobody noticed, then you get to play the A, if a tree fell in the woods, do the other trees laugh at it? Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's you know, Google down isn't trending on Twitter. So this is a nothing burger, you know, that kind of thing. Right? But, yeah. If uh, Elon calls, would you? I think he might need some networking help. Would you? Would you consider going over there? Uh, well, since I did work on Starlink, which is one of his little babies, that's right. Uh, the only way you can sustain, by the way, a ten thousand satellite constellation in low Earth orbit, where they degrade and fall back into the atmosphere and they die within five years, is if you can dramatically reduce the cost of putting things in space, which they have done. Mm -hmm. Like it used to cost a million dollars a pound to put something in space and now it's 10. Wow. So $10, whatever you want to $10 right, so, from, from a right, million so whatever, to $10. Wow. Dang, that's right. crazy. So, what, so whatever you want to say about Elon and you know, his crazy antics, uh, you can say that the Falcon nine is a, is a, is a machine. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Wow. Wow. That's, that's an amazing multiple. Um, right. so, uh, how much, how much severance did you say you got? Uh, well, I didn't say, but, uh, they're, they're going to pay me for the better part of a year. Oh, we uh, actually have good. the, uh, so, uh, we have, uh, Sundar's, uh, statement on that. 
Right. And so it, it basically they pay you 16 weeks plus a couple of weeks for every year you worked at the company. And, and you've I worked, worked there, there so long. Minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. right. And, so, and we yeah, should say, you know, uh, the, the, according to the uh, Wall Street Journal, layoffs reach as high as the vice president level. Uh, they completely laid off the entire Area 120 team, their Blue Sky R&D team. Oh, all? I thought it was just eviscerated. It was all. I think they laid everybody off. I'll have to, we'll have to, oh. I'll have to verify that. What does that say about their R&D? Well, oh. the people they didn't lay off were people who'd created a product that had then been incorporated into Alphabet. Yeah, but where's the next one? And the next but one. But where's the, the next, next one? one? Yeah. So, I mean, this, they're cutting, it's not cutting to the bone when you're cutting only 6%, but it's cutting a lot of, and I, this was my real surprise was because, because the, the statement from Sundar Pichai is, you know, we really grew and, uh, and, uh, but the economy has changed. So we're going to, we have to shrink a little bit. And it implied that it was going to be the people that we, that grew. Um, but it isn't, it's, uh, it's across the board at, at a, <laughs> a lot of different levels. And I'm so sorry that it, uh, you, Richard, that you were one of the people uh, hit by that. Uh, it sounds like you're going to be okay. Well, the way I look at this is there are 2 billion people in the world that make a dollar a day. Right. So th this is a first world problem. Yeah. Right. right. But it's still a personal thing. And when you, you do work, live in the first world. Yeah. And when you and work for a company for that many years, you know, I saw one person tweet after 20 years. When you're with a company for 20 years, or in your case, what was it, 17, 12, 15? 16. 16? 15 years. That's your, that's a, that's a, especially a young guy like you, that's like a big part of your life, a yep. huge chunk of your life. Uh, you you probably started there before your kids were born. So. Uh, uh, I did start there when they were two. Two. Okay. So they, they don't have any memories of me not exactly. working for Google. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that, and I, I think that. I don't know. For me, it was always the case that a lot of who I, who I was and how I value myself in the world was my work. So it hits hard, regardless of yeah. the, you know, the financial impact or it's very philosophical view to say, you know, I'm doing better than those other 2 billion, but it's still, I don't think uh, we should ignore how hard that must be to suddenly without any warning be told, yeah, you don't work here anymore. Yeah, that is that is very difficult. I, I, I will say, I mean, I am if I'm sad, it's mostly I'm sad for the fact I mourn the company that Google is no longer that company. So that is the thing that that I'm sad about. I mean, that will characterize that. Old, what 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 is what is the old Google yeah, compared to the new Google? That's what I was going to ask, because I picture Google as the, the, the folks running around with bicycles and in and, and lollipops and ice cream cones and just fun time. And why do you digging into the code and so on and so forth. Has it become a little bit more, um, I don't know, structured and squared off, if you will? Well, and I, I, I kind of feel like to some degree, you know, the unicorns and magic rainbows was not going to last forever. I mean, okay. that, that every company goes through phases. Mm -hmm. So it was almost, an, I mean, and, you know, Google had expanded from, you know, the 7,000 when I was there to like almost 200,000 or whatever it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, the, so that whenever they cut 12,000 people, that's 6% of everybody. But that's still right. uh, a, a lot of actual real people that, that got impacted. Right. So and, and of course, the way they did it, even though I don't even know if there's an easy way to do this. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so. Having been let go suddenly from a company very publicly, being part of something like that is, I mean, it's probably better than just being fired randomly one day all on your own, but having everybody realize, like being able to say it very publicly actually allows a lot of cool opportunities to come your way where people never would have talked to you beforehand because they thought you were happily employed. So I really hope that that comes and happens for you because it is kind of cool to be like, Guys, I'm free. Anybody yeah. like me? Yeah. And then a right. bunch of people no. be like, "Oh, Not they that you need to kick it. from it." And or, you know, Stacy, because you were there, you've you were a giga ohm when it uh, dissolved, so you've kind of been through yes. this. Richard, have you seen any communities like what's been happening with the Twitter engineers, where they leave and they've, they've gone so somewhere I, online I, and I, made, yeah, created I think, these communities? I think yeah, I think there was a discord or some other things that they were talking about, you know, where you can go and I guess, you know, commiserate. 
uh, about, well, yeah, this sucks and yeah, it sucks and uh, it's, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I, I admit I wasn't really, I mean, I was in the core of cadets at Texas A&M and it was always a suck it up and drive on kind of place where mm -hmm. you can cry, cry about spilled milk, but what's the point? So, yeah. uh, yeah. anyway, so that's kind of the way I'm approaching it is, uh, that, uh, this is actually, you know, like now I can write that book. Yeah. Oh, are yeah. you? Are you going to write a book? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I figure that, you know, some of these things like the WTF meeting, maybe not everybody knows that those things happen. Right. No, I you think know, that'd so, be very so, interesting. Yeah. So you, you, you screenplay kind of a little, you know, like you change the names and the incidents and then you kind of make it not, you know, like a based on true events, but not actual true. And then you can, you could even make a movie out of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, cause these are companies that everyone interacts with every single day, but they never really see what happens behind the mm -hmm. curtain on the side of what, you know, how do you keep the wheels on the wagon? Right. Have, I don't know if you've gotten to this point yet in your uh, your stages of grief, but but can you look back now on your 16 years at Google and and kind of s summarize uh, what it meant to you and and if there was a lesson to be learned? Except don't so, keep everything in yeah. your Google Keep account. Yeah, well, <laughs> other other than that, for sure. Well, because because I, I never thought I was going to get cut off abruptly like this. Right. Yeah. So if I had, I would have done things differently, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but you know, the backup early and often in more than one place. And, you know, I, you know, it's the cloud. It's, it's, it's dual home. It's all good. I'm never, but the, unless they cut me off. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people uh, think, well, Google, I will always have my Google Docs. It's a good lesson. <laughs> right. Yes. That, maybe that not. There is a lesson to be learned. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you not. have that other account. Yeah. where you just make a dummy account and you just copy everything into that account. Yeah. So if this account ever gets blocked, you still have that one, right? Wow. That type of thing. But wow. yeah. Um, Ask our very own Jason Howell. <laughs> Didn't he get Yeah, I was going to say, any, any, like, even if you're a normal person, we're seeing people get chopped out of their Google accounts for, well, there's Jason's thing. There's the, um, there's the whole anti-pornography thing where, People oh yeah, talked about on the show with yeah. parents taking pictures of their kids. Um, yeah, anything so. can. A lot of things can happen, including you know, a mistaken identity. Uh, any other lessons uh, learned? Any other thoughts you have about? Well, so I was at. I, I actually was asked to go speak at a funeral last week for a friend of mine's father who passed away unexpectedly. Oh, yeah, and uh, he he had worked at NASA you know, where he worked on Apollo 11 and he developed like the camera system for Apollo 11 and he worked there for several years, but then he decided he wanted to impact people's lives. So he left that after about three years and he went and became a high school physics teacher uh, for the, for the rest of his career with his wife. And she was also a teacher. But my, my takeaway from that was working at NASA and working on Apollo 11 was amazingly impressive. And it was just an amazing thing that he had done but it wasn't his life. Yeah. And, and so I kind of feel that way about my time at Google. It was a good run. Obviously I'm disappointed in the way it ended, but you know, it's uh, it's, it, it was an amazing thing that will always be part of my life, but it is not my life. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got a great attitude, Richard. I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, I'm glad you could kind of be with us and, and, and yeah, people could hear sure. what it, what it's like, you know, and what the experience is. And, uh, and it's probably a good, good warning to all of us not to tie our, uh, our personalities up with our job, that they, they probably should be too different, at least not our self-worth anyway. Uh, Richard, good, good luck to you. Indeed. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have, yes, a, great, I will, have uh, a great day. Stay in touch. Let us know what happens. Yeah. Thanks, I, 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 yeah. I will let you know. Whatever I land, wherever I land, I'll, yeah. I'll let you know. Appreciate it. I, I, I'll give you a ring later on, brother. Okay. Richard, hey. Take it easy, Ant. See ya. Ant and uh, Richard worked together at uh, Gina Smith's new domain dot com, where Richard was the science editor, and uh, that's how you know him. And uh, actually, now I realize that's how I know. Him. <laughs> I didn't realize at the time. <laughs> uh, I remember reading his stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a real shock for a lot of people. Uh, I think at uh, Google there was a, uh, according to Business Insider, a contentious town hall meeting on Monday uh, with hmm. Sundar Pichai and uh, remaining staff. In uh, Google's chief people officer Fiona Ciccioni was there uh, as well. They uh, they were at great pains to say that it was not a random layoff, 
that, it, that the layoff was based on factors like the company's highest priorities, the employee's skill set, experience, productivity, performance history. Um, not every leader was told about this. Uh, Ciccioni said, in an ideal world, we would have given managers, like Richard's boss, a heads up, but we have over 30,000 managers at Google. We just didn't have time to do it, do that. Um, people were a little upset, apparently, according to Business Insider. Uh, one employee asked about the communication strategy, saying many employees didn't know who else was impacted. Google did not share a list of people based on a principle of respect for people's privacy. This is Rick Osterloh speaking, who's uh, head of uh, vice president of uh, devices and services. He said the company wanted to let people share their information on their own terms, which is why I, I guess I saw so many Twitter posts from people saying, uh, it's a shock. I'm not at uh, Google anymore after all this. Leo, time. one thing I heard is that is that not everybody in the company knows because in Europe, you've got to go through a whole right. different process. Right. A place like France and Germany, they're, 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 people are still waiting for access to Paul. Yeah, this is what uh, Elon Musk learned <laughs> to, his, <laughs> to his own uh, chagrin that it's a lot harder to fire people in Europe than it is in the U.S. It was really, you know, one of the things that's really been fun with this week in Google is to get those special guests. Richard Hay had approached us and said, I'd like to be on the show. And uh, it was really uh, kind of a fascinating interview. I expect more of the same in 2024 coming up uh we're gonna do something we rarely do talk about sports unfortunately stacy higginbotham <laughs> is is while she loves her pickleball is not quite an expert on baseball and it was a very kind of welcome respite from more conversations about elon musk watch in 2021, Mr. Musk was the lone Tesla board member to go on trial in a shareholder lawsuit of the company's acquisition of Solar City. A judge ruled in his favor last year. So Elon is is uh, one is three for oh, three for how do you say that, you sports person? Three and oh, sir. Three and oh, thank you. He's batting a thousand. <laughs> batting a thousand. Math is hard. <laughs> or three for three if you're talking baseball. Three for three. He's over the Mendoza line. Wait, he's batting a thousand, but isn't a four? Is it a? Don't okay. ask. Three of three, a hundred percent. A hundred percent is batting a thousand. Yeah. Batting a thousand is a hundred percent. Isn't there something involving four in baseball or am I thinking just four point? Think no, four, 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 uh, four balls, to think a, a, a walk. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, Gosh. is there any other four? I think that's the only four. No, no. There's okay. four bases. If you include well, four home. bases, even I know that. Well, but it's not. Is home a base? It's a plate. It's not a base. It's a plate. It's There's not a three base. bases. Oh, on a plate. this is why I hate baseball. This is why <laughs> you always get into the. Oh wow. Okay, I'm sorry I asked. I was. Uh, I was yeah, just, you should be. <laughs> oh. So batting average is you Wait, move the decimal over don't three you have to a, the right. Yep. I thought. Don't you have a? Isn't there like a? 4.0 batting average. You could have a 400. You could be batting 400 like the you can splitted splinter Ted Williams. You sure could. Yeah, but okay, that's, maybe that's, but that's still thinking. 40%. Yeah, even right, the best hitters. No one hits 100. Nobody yeah, hits 100%. That's, okay, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, batting 400. Thank y'all. That was helpful. <laughs> You could be Sorry. batting 450 or 350 or yeah. 550 or 600. I got it. This is 400 is just one number out of, oh, I don't know, 100 Anything of Anything but Elon. I would rather talk about baseball than Elon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ted Williams had a lifetime average of merely 344, uh, and yet he was also considered one of the greatest baseball hitters of all time. Tony Gwynn. And how do you say it? Is Tony it Gwynn. A, he was point four no point four hundred. How do you say? Well, you're you, you, you say four hundred, but it's printed dot four zero zero. Okay, so that's Got the it. confusion. He was the last major league baseball player to hit over four hundred in a season, Mister Split and Split, Tony. Ted Williams. Tony Gwynn, what was his? What it was his? Tony Gwynn was. I thought he was right there at four hundred too. Uh, so he was pretty prolific. According to the AI. <laughs> Ah, Neva says. Ted Williams was the last Major League Baseball player to hit over 400 in a season. But let me see what Tony Gwynn, Tony Gwynn had, because he was a great hitter as well, for the, also for the Red Sox, right? 
uh, Padres. Oh, that's what right. about he was that dude Padres. from the Cardinals, Mark? Mark McGuire. How did we? Yeah, oh, yeah, but he oh, was Lord. juiced. Stacey, this he is your fault. Home he was juiced. Change. That doesn't count. Oh. Tony Gwynn's oh. career well, we, batting average was that's... 338. Oh, uh, 338. Okay. Again, amazing, right? That's Still really, really good, and it's only a third good. of the time. What about Pujols? Didn't Albert he just Pujols. do something like a year ago? And he Albert beat Pujols Ted Williams? Or... in a long time. That's St. Oh. Louis Cardinals as well. I know. That's I have a Cardinals fan in my house. I only hear about the Cardinals. <laughs> that's the only that's the only team I'm ever well, going to know see. anything Albert about. Albert Pujols batting average, two ninety six career. Oh, okay. He did something like within the last year or two that was notable, but I don't know what it was. We don't have to talk about baseball anymore. He played for twenty two seasons. Yeah, he's old. Pretty impressive. Is uh, pretty he's, awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, pitchers and batters oh. report soon, don't they? Around the corner. Oh, see, it's this almost is... springtime. Okay. And I'm not much of a baseball fan, but I know enough. Albert Pujols, who bats right and throws right, weighs 235 pounds. Born Beast. January 16th, 1980, in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals in the 13th round of the 1999 Major League Baseball June Amateur Draft. Mr. Jerry, is there, is there a seventh inning stretch for us here? Yes, yeah, here's your seventh now. inning stretch. You ready? You ready? <laughs> it's time for. <laughs> there we go. There's the brass. <laughs> Boy, people are going to love this episode. <laughs> what, the, what the hell is that? That was the brass for your announcement. <laughs> the, the Google change line. Okay. Uh, and while there is a little Elon news, and I guess I'll talk about Elon a little bit, the real, the story that people are rapidly getting to the point where they don't want to hear anymore is AI. Yeah. But mm. I'm sorry, we got to tell the stories because they're kind of wild. They're it wild. It is a crazy time. This it is, is like, a crazy time. You know, I was going to say it's about... the Pets.com era of AI. <laughs> what Pets.com <laughs> was to the internet, AI is to right AI. now. AI, shipping kitty litter since 2008. Um, let's start with Elon because uh, this was pretty hysterical, but it's over. So it's kind of like, um, <laughs> so Elon, it started in the Super Bowl because Elon was at the Super Bowl sitting next to Rupert Murdoch eating a hot dog. Okay. Uh, but you remember from last week, the conversation that Elon had with uh, a Twitter engineer who's since been uh, named uh, in which uh, Elon said, well, why is my engagement on Twitter going away? To which the engineer <laughs> producing the papers, by the way, Said, well, look at your uh, look at your Google search results. You're much less interested in you uh, since it's well, gone down to 110 percent or something. To which Elon replied, "You're fired. You're, <laughs> you're out of here." That's not the answer I wanted to hear. So we found out what the answer was that Elon wanted to hear. And of course, the only people left at Twitter now are people who are mostly spending their time trying to figure out what Elon wants, so they can immediately sycophants. sycophants so that yeah. they can immediately uh, implement it. So, uh, and of course, Zoe Schiffer and Casey Newton at Platformer got the story. They were the ones with the story about the the uh, engineer who got fired immediately. So Elon flies home from the Super Bowl in his jet, and, which we know about because of Elon Jet Tracker on Mastodon. Uh, and, and at 2 a.m., on Monday morning, that you know, uh, the next morning after the Super Bowl, his cousin mm -hmm. James sends out an urgent message. 2 a.m. on Slack. We are debugging an issue with engagement <laughs> across the platform. <laughs> Did he, he put that it, in air quotes? Yeah, engage. He tags it at here, which means anybody who's on Slack at that time, at 2.36 a.m. Monday morning, will see it. Any people who can make... <laughs> this is so sad. Any people who can make dashboards and write software. Please, can you help solve this problem? This is high urgency. If you're willing to help out, please thumbs up this post. 
drop whatever work you're doing that helps users and address Elon's ego. Attention Massage problem. my ego for a minute. Yeah. So it turns out that the precipitating factor was Elon's Musk. Elon's tweet about the Super Bowl got far less engagement than President Biden's. How dare he? Biden, Wonder why. Biden's tweet, in which he said he would be supporting his wife and rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles, generated 29 million impressions. Musk, also tweeting his support for the Eagles, generated 9 million impressions. <laughs> Before deleting the tweet in apparent frustration, writes Schiffer. Now, uh, the Eagles lost, so it, it didn't it didn't really matter, but it really pissed off. <laughs> I was like, off, it mattered to Elon. It pissed off Elon that the president of the United States would get more engagement than him. How dare he? Well, I guess he, he he's like, you know what, Twitter, this is my backyard. This is my well, house. He proved I it. Should, I should, you know, he proved get it. all of the love here. Uh, by the way, uh, the, the people he fired over this last week were principal engineers. One of the two remaining principal engineers at the company was fired. <laughs> so there's one left. Yeah. Uh, late wow. Sunday night, Musk addressed his team in person. 80 people were, 80 people, remember, there aren't that many there still, were pulled into work on the project, which had quickly become priority number one at the company. Employees worked through the night investigating various hypotheses about why Musk's tweets aren't reaching as many people as he thought they should and testing out possible solutions. Now, admittedly, this is hard because it's, it's hard to know. There's a lot of pieces involved here. One possibility, engineers said, was that Musk's reach might have been reduced because he'd been blocked and muted by so many people in recent months. I'm sure that engineer did not <laughs> tell Elon that. that. Um, let's see. Uh, there were also legitimate technical reasons the tweets weren't performing. Twitter's system has historically promoted tweets from users whose posts perform better to both followers and non-followers. In the For You tab, Musk's tweets write writes the platformer, should have fit that model, but showed up less only about half the time that some engineers thought they should, according to some internal estimates. By Monday afternoon, and now we're getting back to the air quotes, the problem <laughs> had been fixed. <laughs> Twitter deployed code to automatically green light all of Musk's tweets. Actually, it's probably a fairly simple fix, making his meaning his tweets bypass all those filters designed to show people the best content. The algorithm now artificially boosted Musk's tweets by a factor of 1,000, a constant score that ensured his tweets rank higher than anyone else's in the feed. If how it, much? That only cost him 40, how many billions? 44 billion. 44 billion. Internally, yeah. this is called a power user multiplier, although it only applies to Elon Musk, we're told. The, I'm still reading from Casey and uh, as always, uh, platformer. The code also allows Musk's account to bypass Twitter heuristics that would otherwise prevent a single account from flooding the core mm -hmm. ranked feed now known as For You. And of course, the first thing I get up Monday morning, I see all these people tweeting, posting, saying, I got nothing but Musk in my For, in my oh, for You feed. Wow. And some of the That's Musk, a good show title, Nothing But nothing Musk. Nothing But Musk. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the tweets, there was one where a woman is holding the hair of another woman and forcing her to drink milk that looked vaguely <laughs> pornographic. They were weird. They were creepy. That's when he posted that as an acknowledgement. <laughs> he, it's apparently the forced to drink milk meme. Wait, so I couldn't avoid him now if I were well, on Twitter? It's been fixed since because I asked Lisa, who doesn't follow Elon. See, it, if you followed him, maybe you would say, well, I follow him, but she doesn't follow him. People who didn't right. follow him were getting it. The For You feed is not just people you follow. It's it's whatever algorithmically is promoted. Right. What, uh, what they've done, as far as I can tell, is they, they've dialed down his advantage somewhat to the point where it's not so ridiculous. It's just kind of ridiculous. The artificial... And so he's still by far the most... Yes. So, so the, they, they have an internal score, uh, which I believe maxes out at 1,000. Yeah. And they had him at 1,000. They had him at 1,000. so I think that... They dialed them down to 930 or something. <laughs> I'm making this up. But my point yeah. is that they, they just backed off on it a bit. He's still the most prioritized user. And if you think about, you know, I think, you know, I think one of the biggest reasons is that a lot of people who used to follow him, used to comment, used to like his stuff, now blocked him. Right. 
I count myself among those numbers. And, um, and that's not the case for somebody like, say, Pre President Biden. The people who support Biden would follow him and haven't blocked him. So uh, what they're doing is they're sort of prioritizing him back through that. However, if you block Musk, and I recommend that everyone does, then you won't see his stuff. The block still uh, is affected. Uh, but he's still, I, I think he's still going to have higher priority than anyone else on the system. So I'm just looking through for you now. I, I believe I do follow Musk. I don't use Twitter that much and I don't see any Musk. So I think he's been, he's, he, yeah. oh, there's some Musk. I, I don't think he's Musk. tweeted recently. Well, I think yeah, he's maybe, that, his activity. maybe that's it. So, um, uh, Clearly, he was. I mean, that must have been a little bit embarrassing, especially once people learned what was going on, that he was actually using his cloud as owner of the site. Why do people still use Twitter when they know that the owner of the site could do something like that? As beyond me, but people don't want to leave it. I guess you, I learned that lesson when I was um, yeah. making war against Facebook. They people just don't care. They don't care. You know, they just don't care. And they, they want to interact with the people that they interact with. And all that other stuff is just a background noise to a lot of people. The bottle feeding tweet got a 118.4 million impressions. The next one uh, previously posted to Reddit and satirically attributed to Abraham Lincoln got 49.9 million. But this is compared to previous tweets from months earlier, which had fewer than 8 million. So there is some boosting still going on I, I don't honestly care that much about this but it is you know let's face it uh, all of the lip service he paid to making twitter fair balanced uh the you know the the public square and all that stuff that's all bs when it did comes anyone to actually doing, believe that well so, maybe some people did so now they should have now they know to. okay yeah he He's mostly it. doing the things that he accused the old Twitter of doing. Right. That that they they were or were not doing it. They were certainly doing it to a less degree, lesser degree than Musk is now. But he's basically doing what he accused Twitter of doing. At no point did Jack Dorsey it. own my my uh, latest tweets feed. <laughs> you know, right? Not to the degree yeah. that Elon did. It's it's better now. So a lot of people went on there uh, yesterday and said, "Well, I don't see what you're talking about." Lisa did. She said, "Well, I don't see a lot yeah. of Elon." Uh, but I do remember on Monday, it was all Elon all the time. It really was out of control. Yeah, so I haven't I really can't, opened it up in a while. And yeah. I'm glad that I'm now looking at it and it's not as much depressing stuff on here when I look at I, for you. I, I don't honestly want to support whatever's going on over there. So I try not to go yeah. look at it. I look at yeah. it only because uh, of stories like this. So right. It's good for Elon, right. right? Is to get people over there looking at his not this not the one you're showing but stories like the <laughs> one we just said because uh you know so in in that respect is elon probably going see my engagement our engagement's up it's good for us you know roiling the water like this all right i just don't i don't want to support it honestly i really don't boy it's it's really wild to go back what it wasn't even a year ago this whole year was about this crazy up and down at twitter um, I know some of you are getting really tired of the conversation, but when you look back at it, it was, it was wild. Um, I, I don't know how much more there will be in 2024. I really don't. It is not going well for Elon. Shall we say that? Coming up, we're going to change the subject. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg came up with a kind of an interesting competitor for Twitter. Threads, are you on it? Do you use it? When it launched, it was almost instantly the most successful uh, startup, uh, social network startup of all time. Watch. So I guess we have to talk about Threads because it launched uh, right after the show last week. Right after. Yep. In less than a week, almost as many listeners as this show has. 100 <laughs> million users. That's pretty fast. 100 million users half on ios and half on android as best we can tell which is interesting wow yeah yeah that is interesting because you know the brands are all on ios and and the boy are the brands android there are... holy cow yeah, what percentage of that hundred million is brands <laughs> it felt like they were just waiting but what for somewhere to it, be right? what, what percentage of it was uh, meta nudging folks into getting into it versus people saying huh 
I'm actually curious about this. Let me go ahead and sign up. Because I'm pretty you know, sure it's sister in law the nudge that's happening. Yeah, my sister-in-law, who's on Instagram, knew about it, which was unusual because normally no clue. Right. Uh, it's not It's not her thing. Um, but she hadn't signed up. She oh, that's up. interesting. But she Insta didn't know about it. Instagram does kind of encur encourage you, yeah. I think, yeah. to join Threads. Yeah. And this is the strength of it. Threads is a Twitter clone created by Meta, really created by the Instagram division mm -hmm. of Meta, and uh, has taken off. It's pretty obvious why it's taken off. One, because of Instagram, mm -hmm. right? And the, the sign-up process is very straightforward, or maybe even too straightforward, because you have to have your Instagram username as your yep. Threads username. Yep. Uh, and it also brings over the people you follow and who follow you. So you, if you allow it, and I'm sure most people do, that's the default. So you, you kind of instantly have a group of people to follow. That's one of the downsides to Twitter and even more so on Mastodon is if you can figure out how to get in and sign up, mm -hmm. then what? Who right? do you follow? Who do Which you is follow? why portability of your social graph is going to be so important. And, it, and and once things are really federated, if they really are, it opens the door for other small networks to start because you could have the starter kit of friends and move over there. Well, and but that's an interesting point. We're going to get to that actually because there are some um, interesting Nuances. mismatches in in the Fediverse and 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 Activity Pub and, and and Threads, but Threads also learned a lesson that uh, Meta wasn't available to Meta or even Instagram when they launched, which was the algorithmic feed, the TikTok style feed. And so, unless you take steps to avoid it, and it's not not obvious how to do this, when you are on Threads, it looks just like Twitter, except you see people you're not following. Wait a minute, so there is an and uh, there is a non-obvious way to fix that because yeah. that's the problem I have with this platform. It's pretty and, and and I'm not seeing a bunch of junk, but I'm also not seeing things that I'm truly interested in. I think for the beginning, it's a, it's a good way to do it because you immediately have a feed that's full of stuff. Okay. And so it's that's, probably that's interesting. Right. Well, yeah, Plus there's people to follow. follow. Yeah. And so I, there, Maser, Adam Maseri, who runs Instagram and is kind of the lead voice in this says, yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to have a, what they call a following feed. Twitter added that for you feed. And the same horrible. thing. It's horrible. Hate it. But it was the same idea. And it all, people learned this from TikTok. Even when uh, YouTube started, there wasn't really an algorithmic feed. But mm -hmm. what once everybody saw how effective that was on YouTube, and then TikTok adopted it, I think it's it's the it's the thing everybody does because you, you you know when you first in the early days of Twitter you join it and then it's like well okay now what there's nobody well, what's, what, yeah it's like blue sky I, I came to a party and nobody's there yeah it's like blue sky so, so it really threads instantly feels like something's going on mm -hmm. let me um I'll show you how to I think I've been told how to do this let me turn on uh my um, screen mirroring so I'm gonna go to AirPlay one. Uh, Benito is spinning still, but as soon as I can, yeah, there it goes. So now let me show you, uh, I'll go into threads. Can you see my threads here? He's trying to change still, the inputs still happening. Now. Takes a little while to, to get going. So yeah, all the brands. So, the, so it was that. And then the second part of the equation was everybody, <laughs> Elon's just been, you know, driving, driving the, the airplane into the ground. And right. so, People were looking for it. So this is this is uh, threads right now. This is my threads. By the way, there is no desktop version. That's why we had to airplay it from my iPhone. Mm -hmm. See it. You can run it on desktop if you're running Windows and you install Android. Uh, the Android subsystem. You Hello, can have the Android. Android. Yeah, yeah, my Chromebook, it's no problem. I run yeah. it on yeah. Android. That's right. Android. That's right. So uh, anyway, this is how you do it, Ant. You go Crashes. to your account. And the and you hit this uh, menu in the upper right hand corner, which is settings. Okay. And then you go to notifications. Okay. Threads and replies. Okay. And I'm told, and I think it does work because it seems to be doing it from for me. Is you make everything for people you follow, from people you follow, from people you follow. I don't want to see anything from anybody but people I follow. Oh, uh, but then I also have to turn on Android notifications. No, you don't. No, 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 because I don't. Yeah, see, I have my notifications paused. I don't. I don't want notifications. Okay, great. But it, it, it. See, this is why it's not obvious. That happens to change also what you're seeing now on Threads. Except I am. There you go. You saw that thing that was at the top is gone. That was somebody I wasn't following. These are all people I'm following now. Okay. Well, I meant not Carnage for Life, so maybe not. Uh, oh no, that's because Alex Stamos, who I do follow, replied to it. 
So that is one thing that'll happen. I don't want to see that. Well, I don't care to see. They'll give you a following only feed. I agree. But but right now I'm only seeing stuff that is either people I follow or has been replied to or re re threaded. I guess you call it Mm -hmm. by people I follow. Okay, so far I'm seeing that. So it is a lot of brands. There's the New York Times, NPR, which famously left Twitter after Elon accused it of being government-funded media, uh, immediately joined threads. Uh, there's a lot of people who have been looking, like Reuters there, for, for somewhere to be that's not... Yeah, tons of those kinds of places. And there's George Takei, right? Didn't show up on uh, Mastodon yet. Yeah. It also does a good job with video. You can see it's Instagram heritage. And I think, Aunt, you probably appreciate... The, the images look good. How good the images mm-hmm. look. The images Plus look good. Plus, the way it does the image slideshow, you can do panoramas with it, which is... People have been playing with that a little bit. You so can I do many images. Yet. Somebody read the book, and they put up um, screenshots with things uh, uh, underlined. Yeah, see that? Like six screenshots. Yeah. Isn't that oh, great? Nice. Wow. Nice. So, so it's Cheers. like a Twitter with a very good uh, graphical interface, you know, for video and for uh, for um, pictures. I don't think it does audio standalone yet. And there are no, there's no spaces. There's yeah, no, see, a lot of the features that we love. Here's Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback you, for the Kansas City Chiefs. I didn't expect I'm you here. to be following <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, but it looks like you are. <laughs> you know why? Because this was his first tweet. It was a video of him going, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> and I thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to follow you just because of that. Notice, by the way, these plus signs. Mm-hmm. There's Jim uh, Costas. I can't make that bigger, but there's a little plus sign in his head. If I, and this is also smart. I'm looking at this feed and I go, oh, you know, I didn't know Jim Costa of CNN was here. I could just tap it, follow him. And so it's very easy to yeah, add people easy. to your followers. So I think that this is... Um, it's, it's cleverly done. It's cl- I think it's well done. Now, here's the question. <laughs> okay. First of all, did this rehabilitate Zuck? Some people uh, are calling it Zuck see, 2.0. I didn't want to join this, and I haven't joined it because I don't like the data grab that's happening. Right. I hate being, like, I'm not on Facebook. Like, I have, I'm not my either. My business is on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I am on Instagram, but I'm, I don't have the app downloaded. I have none of this because I don't want to be part of that. And I was kind of shocked at all these people are like, wow, there's so many people. I'm like, can we not talk about like how Europe's like, mm, Threads doesn't really handle privacy to the point where we're comfortable with it. It's and a little different. It's like, Threads mm-hmm. saying we don't want to be in Europe because we are concerned about the uh, data pro- uh, rules in Europe and we don't want to deal with that yet. So it's not Europe saying you can't be here. It's Threads saying, well, right. we're going to hold off. Well, it's Europe saying you need to abide by these rules. And yeah, Facebook so saying, saying, I don't, don't know if like I want rules. to play your game. Yeah, and that's not clear, and by the it, way, that that's not going to, that they're not going to figure that out. It could change. Because it can't really, can I mean, see, not being in Europe is a big deal, right? For a, for any social Yeah, network. I think so. But, it, here's, but you can here's also the see data it's grabbing a lot of data. Yeah, here's the, here's the uh, data. Um, this is thank you, uh, Apple, because Apple does force companies to publish right. this, including health and fitness, financial info, contact info, browsing history, usage data, diagnostics, purchases, location, contact, search history, identifiers, sensitive info, and other data. Uh, in other words, everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah. That's a yes. lot of data that, and I'm not, Facebook is not. I mean, I know it's Facebook. I know they're grabbing everything they can, but that's why I got off Facebook in the first place. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, mm, yeah, maybe I'm just not as well. Know, well where is the anymore. outcry from the masses about this collection? I think people were so desperate for a replacement to Twitter. Really? That that's what said, it is. Okay, yeah. we'll just give yes, it all up. That's what it is. You know, it, you know there's a couple of well, I think it's our job as journalists, yeah, and we're all like, I think. We're I'm sitting down you. on the job because we're not explaining this to people. I'm, and I also think people don't understand the risk to their... I'm actually writing about risk in data privacy right now, and mm-hmm. it's a freaking nightmare because... Yeah, but Stacy, It's a lot. Most people, a lot of people do what I did. I said, well, I won't have Facebook on my phone. But then they put Instagram or WhatsApp on their phone. Uh-huh. Right. Do you have WhatsApp on your I phone? Have, I do have WhatsApp on, but WhatsApp is encrypted and no, no, no. Is, WhatsApp actually. No, no, no. My, no, no, no. <laughs> look at the health, look at the health notice on WhatsApp on the uh, iPhone. Yeah. Well, you don't have an iPhone, but I don't have an iPhone. It's, but. The app itself is grabbing the same information. 
damn it, Leo. <laughs> but that's my point. Is that I yes, know. you're absolutely I don't right. Like it. Again. You're absolutely right. But most people, most normal people are already giving Meta all that information anyway. Can you get in touch with all of these Congress folks out here and share that screen that you just share with our Twit folks? Because uh all they're worried about all they're worried about is TikTok and what it's doing. Isn't that hysterical? And this is this yeah. just as egregious, right? So that does bring me to to the second point, which is this is, I think, good for the Fediverse. Because for somebody like you, Stacey, you could f you could put a, a Mastodon app, for instance, on your phone. And if you look at the the privacy card for Mastodon, zero, mm -hmm. nothing. Right. And, and this is the beauty part, thanks to if, and we'll, this will be a good question yeah, if they yeah, do this, yep. if Threads goes yeah. ahead and, and, and as they have promised, uh, incorporates activity pub, then you could follow, let's say you did want to follow uh, Patrick Mahomes. He's on threads. He's not on Mastodon. Mm -hmm. You could follow right. on your Mastodon instance, get all of his threads. He could follow you from, from Twit Social or Mastodon or any other Mastodon instance, not any other, because a few have said we're not going to have anything to do with this, but the, the ones that are not defederating meta. And, and you would have a perfect back and forth conversation. I was wondering how that was going to work, because I heard you talk about it briefly on, on the show Sunday. Like, what is Meta getting out of Nothing. joining Activity Pub? Nothing. Seems so like it goes against their <laughs> business uh, logic, right? It kind of maybe if you want to like really screw Elon Musk, this would be a good way to do it. So here's <laughs> an interesting post from the new stack. Get better PR. <laughs> this is uh, Richard McManus writing. Threads adopting Activity Pub makes sense, but it won't be easy. And I'll go to his his conclusion. It's early days, but in my humble experience. Richard McManus, senior editor of the New Stack, writes, Threads feels like a text-based version of Instagram. That's accurate. The mm -hmm. content is a mix of aspirational and motivational, and the current algorithmic timeline is peppered with celebrities and influencers peddling their memes. Perhaps the biggest challenge integrating with Fediverse apps like Mastodon will be the cultural differences mm -hmm. between the two communities. But, but I'm not worried about that because it's like parallel rivers just because you tap into something from one doesn't mean the whole river comes through that, okay. that pipeline. True. He said, uh, I hope Meta does successfully adopt the protocol so that Mastodon users like me can add a few thread users to their feeds. The ideal outcome would be a bunch of new apps getting built that tap into both Mastodon and thread social graphs. Uh, but he does say it's in the interest of Meta. He's promised it. And Meta has actually put a software engineer, Ben Savage, on the Activity Pub Working Group in the W3C, uh, they have continued to make the steps that they would need to make. There are some technical issues, but I think at this point they've really promised that they would do this. It doesn't, let's face it, does it hurt Meta if Stacy, who's never going to have threads on her phone, follows Patrick Mahomes on Mastodon? It actually it makes, helps. It makes threads more valuable to Patrick Mahomes. Exactly. Because he can right. get more people. Exactly. Elsewhere. Okay. And maybe. Right. All those brands will be super yeah, thrilled. Sure. Okay. And maybe even at Patrick Mahomes at threads.net, notice, you know, somebody on Mastodon says, oh, he's on threads and goes over and follows him on threads. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't suck enough day, enough uh, people for away. Mm -hmm. Those are people like you, Stacey, who would never join it in the first place. Right. But here's another right. thing, too, that for the business perspective, is that uh, a brand that's going to be scared of going on Mastodon or just simply not understanding it? Yeah, they get it for free. On threads. Yeah, and um, you know, if you want to complain about your Delta flight, then you'll do it through Threads, and they'll and that's how they'll you know kind of recapture that old threat uh, Twitter customer mm -hmm. service angle. Okay. Yeah, they wouldn't have to follow. See, that's interesting, and we don't. That's kind of an unknown. If I at reply uh, Delta. On Mastodon, do they see it on Threads? Not clear. It that could be implemented that way, and it might not be. I would hope it would. I be. would hope it would be, and I think you're right. But there's the, a value Meta the, the whole charge like thing. Yeah, Meta couldn't charge like API access for no. this, right? Because it's activity pub. It's activity pub. Yeah. Okay. So here's the here's another contrarian point of view that will make you feel better, Stacy, from the Jog blog. Jog is Jason O. Gilbert. Facebook's threads mm. is so depressing. I saw that. Like a $19 turkey sandwich at an airport. God, I couldn't he click writes, on threads is depressing. I couldn't click on it. <laughs> I couldn't click on well, it. Well, you're going to get it anyway because uh. I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> Every part of threads existence makes me shake my head. 
Twitter selling itself to Elon Musk because he offered a stupid high price. Elon Musk promptly <laughs> ruining Twitter so badly that any alternative looks palatable, even one run by Mark, my other platform enabled a little literal genocide, Zuckerberg. He's talking about Myanmar, of oh, course. Man. The bland, market-tested design. The thirsty grindfluencers. By the way, I'm adding that to my <laughs> grind vocabulary. Love that. <laughs> grind thirsty grindfluencers. Thirsty grindfluencers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Those are the I'm... ones who are influencers who are grinding hard to create thirsty content so I'm you will to, follow them. I'm going to update my profile <laughs> with that right now. <laughs> Posting. Well, it's not done. Thirsty. The thirsty grindfluencers posting with the energy of a puppy with zoomies. <laughs> okay. The looming, heavy breathing presence of Zuck. The corporateness of it all. Just all of it, man. Every part of it sucks. Here's Johnny Bones threading. What's up, everyone? To which Zuck says, one thing that's up is the number of world champion MMA fighters on threads, especially now that you're here. <laughs> Yeah, it does make me kind of erp up in my mouth. <laughs> what does Threads feel like, he says? Johnny, John O. Gilbert. Threads feels like when a local restaurant you enjoy opens a location in an airport. Oh. 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 It feels oh. like a Twitter alternative. Jokes. One, one post. Uh, uh, they should have picked the best one. Okay. It feels like a Twitter alternative you would order from Brookstone. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like if an entire social network was those posts that tell you what successful entrepreneurs do before 6 a.m. You know, <laughs> see, why did he put this this headline on here? Because if, if it had been something else, I probably would have read it. It's very funny. Yes. It feels like watching a PowerPoint from the brand research team where they tell you that Pop-Tarts is crushing it on social. <laughs> it feels like casual friday on linkedin we've seen those <laughs> we've seen those uh, um then here's a here's a he he's really dresses this up with some actual threads here's mark cuban posting what up mr beast to which jake paul says giving five thousand dollars to someone who rethreads this oh, gosh, to which gary v funny. replies oh, focused oh, as if Oh, man. And then apparently posts a emoji that is cannot be reproduced. So, <laughs> oh, I was like, is that a question mark? Like, no. why Gary V? No. Gary, Gary V Gary. never asks questions. Yeah, he no. only gives only answers. statements. Only why? <laughs> wow. Currently, there's no way to only see posts from the people you are following. Continues Jog. You click on your homepage to see what your friends are up. But guess what? It's time for an epic meme from the official Salesforce account. <laughs> <laughs> As young Sheldon once said, "Bazinga!" So uh, it's a it's really. <laughs> Here's some more Backstreet Boys. Oh my God, we're back again. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> Hi from Grimace. Say it back, please. Ellen DeGeneres. Welcome to gay Twitter. Netflix. Threads is kind of like Love is Blind because everybody is all about the engagement. Oh, my god! I'll fire that intern. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's funny because there, there's so much of this, like, brand content trying really hard to, to, to outdo everybody else. Thirsty like, grindfluencing. Thirsty grindfluencing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, I, I, for some reason, I can see behind the brand to exactly what you just said, uh, uh, Jeff. It's like I can see some, you know, twenty something mm -hmm. saying, yeah. "Oh yeah, I got what the we Wendy's say? account. I'm so excited. I'm on it. I'm, <laughs> I'm on, on it, it, boss. I'm on it." <laughs> <laughs> and so, in a way, it's more personal than a brand to me. Like I see the person behind the brand, and it kind of, it's kind of funny, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Those tips you gave me about potentially Did that fix it? No. When I since I've refreshed it, it's it takes back. a while maybe. It's it back. Takes no, a, it's back to showing it's, me it's all so of funny. these plus marks. I know, and but but be patient because I think it takes a while to take. Okay. I think it does actually work. In fact, I was I like, was kind of not miffed. following Google. I had the yes, same this experience is this week in Google, but I'm not following Google on anything. <laughs> what does Google say? Anything interesting? Is cereal soup? <laughs> you serious? <laughs> Is a hot dog a sandwich? It's, I don't know. Let's talk about the most soup. banal stuff. And ah. it has 122 replies. Oh. <laughs> yeah, people love those questions. But you can't... Uh, so I can understand why a brand wouldn't, isn't going to want to post that inanity on Twitter anymore. No. 
Because they're going to say, will our white people supreme? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, right. I mean, it's going to, it's, uh, you Devolve. don't even want to, it's going to devolve. So I think brands were thirsty for this. Oh, yeah. I saw a story. I didn't put it in the rundown. Oh, uh, but I saw a story just saying exactly that. The headline was the brands can't wait. Oh, they're so happy. Dying from Alberta. They're so happy. They still haven't, <laughs> they still haven't done activity, pub. Well, they kind of have. They, they said like last week. Oh, yeah. That's, that's any day now. So uh, maybe we'll be reporting on that uh, early next year. Twig will be back uh, January 3rd with a brand new show. But meanwhile, we're going back in time, looking at uh, some of the highlights of 2023. And of course, it was really the year of AI. We'll talk about Facebook's AI in just a second. More sour grapes about uh, Google. More people leaving. And what is, uh, what is Facebook going to do to respond to chat GPT, watch. So uh, let's do a Google story. This comes from Paul Thurod. I love it. Paul does not like Google. No. Mark Lukowski I leaves Google calls guy. company unstable. He didn't like it either. Uh, former member of the original Microsoft NT team, he left Google 20 years after joining them. He's been there 20 years. Writing this, get ready. Well, actually, he tweeted it. Does that count? Is that writing? Today it does. <laughs> yeah. I have decided to... I'm going to do them in a cranky old man voice. I have decided to step away from my role at Google where I was a senior director of engineering responsible for OS and software platform for AR and XR devices. Now, this is where it gets mean. The recent changes in AR leadership and Google's unstable commitment and vision have weighed heavily on my decision. So let's stop there. He's bitter that he can't make his toys that nobody really wants anyway, so Google made a smart decision to get out of AR. <laughs> Moving forward, I'm eager to explore opportunities that allow me to further advance augmented you know, reality technology. Job hunting. Somebody yeah, hire this Please give me a job. Uh, yeah. And it's intersection with generative AI because that's the hotness. That's the hot thing right now. Yeah, Throw I, in some NFTs and, and, and Bitcoin, <laughs> fella. You know, somebody will give you a job out there. He has yeah. worked... Okay, this guy may be yep. less this is, yeah, exactly. He's worked at Google, Facebook, Mambo, VMware, Google, Microsoft, Deck, Vitesse, Color, Data General, and Victor. Wow. Huh. Uh, okay. He was at Google, left Google, came back to Google, so add that in too. Right. Yeah, he's a grumpy cuss. Okay, but maybe they're... Okay, I'm just looking for anything. Well, so Google has been kind of waffly on their yeah. AR. They're maybe they're smart yeah. to do it. I mean, maybe I, I'm just like if we're going to maybe he should go to Meta because yeah, Meta is finally actually there are two stories this week. One is Meta. The other is Apple, both of whom are working hard. They have never released publicly mm -hmm. uh, chat GPT style products as Microsoft and Google have. Microsoft uh, is working with Meta on the next generation of Llama or is it Yama? Llama. Llama. It's LLM, it's so it's just I they've it added some Yama, letters to right. LLM, make it Llama. It's the Llama two, Llama one leaked out. I don't think it was ever f officially released by uh, Meta, but uh, yeah, that someone kind of stole it. They got stolen today. Well, are we going to talk about them playing fast and loose with open source licensing? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go on. You're on. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Uh, I will, yes, we will. Today we're introducing the availability of Llama 2 rights, Mr. Meta. There's no, no byline. The next generation of our open source large language model, free for research and commercial use. And Microsoft making sure they have a hand in every AI basket is working with Meta. They are the preferred partner for Llama 2. But if it's free, what does it mean to be preferred? Well, the real, I think the real issue is, and we were talking about this on Windows Weekly, Richard Campbell's been beating this drum. It's surprisingly expensive to generate these models and then to support them. And they need somebody like Microsoft with very big cloud infrastructure and Azure and, mm -hmm. and lots of NVIDIA processors uh, to do it. So partnering with Microsoft makes, I think, a lot of sense. In but fact, here's my question on the free part. Is yeah. this, an, and this is a stupid question, but most of mine are, is this an Android-like strategy? Like we're going to undercut everybody else and that's how Llama will 
um, become a dominant model? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it has to perform, right? Because even with Android, there's people that are so against Android because it doesn't necessarily perform the way I. They're introducing does, right? an open ecosystem for interchangeable AI frameworks. So that sounds interesting. Say again. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can. They are introducing an open ecosystem for interchangeable AI frameworks. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, I think that means there'll be a standard, which would be kind of cool. And having Microsoft uh, involved is interesting. Uh, is this the llama news? This is the llama. We're this still is all. About llama? We're still talking about wake llama. Up, no. Wake up, Stacey. Wake up. No, Stacey. Wake, wake up, Stacey. Hey, I know. hey, up. <laughs> Uh, they are also working for with AWS and Hugging Face, but uh, Azure, it'll be part of the Azure AI model catalog. So, they, you know, this is this Microsoft so, will make money because uh, you'll be paying are, Azure hours for this, Azure minutes. It, this framework sounds less like a standard and more like an app store or something oh, like that. Maybe, like you'll yeah. have interchangeable plug -in models plug -in. that will work. Right. Yeah. Right. Although Google was really promoting that idea, what weren't they of a kind of a plugins and so forth? Open AI, okay. and I'm sure Jeff, you might have something to say about this, has done a deal with the I American. I have something to say about everything, Leo. But the, <laughs> <laughs> has done a deal with the American Journalism Product Project. Oh yeah, for five million dollars to help fund efforts by local outlets to experiment with writing AI articles. So they also did a deal with Associated Press, as we mentioned earlier, and this is out of the playbook of Facebook and Google trying to make friends with the media industry before the media industry turns on them and gets regulation. And then um, that's all I predict is what's going to happen. So OpenAI is committing for a while. five million dollars in funding for local news initiatives uh, through AG, AJP. Now, it's not not it's not all cash. Some of it is uh, ChatGPT API. Yeah tokens american uh, journalism project is is a 50 million dollar i forget fund um started by john thornton who was uh, uh, the founder of the texas tribune to try to get what's, they're going they're going crazy because of the discord we can't allow no the i don't like john thornton i know i know john that. thornton wow oh, okay right. She was. I used to, never tell. See, it's Stacy reactions. I can't, are you are you reacting to to your to your bitch? I'm your replaceable uh, <laughs> sticker. Are you reacting to a name I just said? Are you reacting to <laughs> the hunger for the waffle? I can't. I can't read you, Stacy. I can't is, read you. I thought that was somebody behind me that was so strong and powerful. I was like, where does that sound come from? This boy, uh, she okay, really so we don't like, like this it. guy. <laughs> I I I, can, I personally. But I get it. I can understand. Just, it was Texas Tri he started Texas Tribune. And, 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 and he, he and other people also started American Journalism Project. And it's an effort to create basically Texas Tribunes across the country, which would be a good thing. No, As a journalist who had to cover John Thornton, he did not treat journalists well at all. Oh, well, that's okay. funny. There's a revelation, okay. right? Here's the guy who wants AI to start writing these articles. Now... No, this has been a problem no, in local journalism. Is who we're going to get to cover the city council meetings, the school board meetings? Then um, you go to you forget AI. You go to a, a startup called City Bureau that is doing brilliant work training citizens to cover these kinds of things. Know the limitations of that and pay them for it. Daryl Holiday, the co-founder, just announced that he's going to move on to something else, which is interesting. City Bureau is a great example of that. It ain't AI. It is empowered citizens. That's how you got to cover that stuff. Well, but what if, I mean, remember we talked last week about how a conversation was recorded, fed to oh, Whisper AI to transcribe, as you might do with a city council meeting, and then fed to ChatGPT to summarize, and it did a really good job. Now, I guess you'd still need it or want a human to check it. Mm -hmm. Well, no, and Leo, here's the thing. If it's, if it's about the sewer plat on Elm Street, okay. But like the school board meeting that I went to, the last one I went to was about the right wing trying to eliminate a sociology textbook because it was a mean to white people. No AI is going to get the nuance of that, babe. You yeah. might be surprised. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of content about that running around right now. But that's the thing. <laughs> if, if you're going to use these AIs, go ahead and use them, but still have some sort of, of human involved to, to clean things up and help with corrections and whatnot. 
an editor. But it's also about going up and asking the right questions. And it's about, it's about more. I mean, I'm, I sound like an old fart defending the, the human journalist. What I'm really saying is, is that, is that we in journalism thought our value was in this thing called content. And so a machine comes along that can make unlimited amounts of content. That's not where our value has ever been. Mm-hmm. Our value has been in asking the right questions in challenging power in mm-hmm. representing communities and understanding their needs, giving them service. That's where the value of journalism is, but we see it in places like Go Media. Now you see it as let's make more content to get more pages with more ads. Yeah, but there's and still that's the, the economic there's still value to the people who exactly. own papers. Yeah, there's still so, a balance yeah. though, because uh, like what Miss Higginbotham was pointing out earlier, I agree. There is still a place for some of those low hanging fruit pieces of you know how do I connect to a Wi-Fi securely, you know stuff like that. People, some people still don't know. We've already talked about how much people don't know previously in the show. One of my students in um, in our in our executive program was talking about uh, that from Sweden was talking about evergreen content. Once you've written that yeah. once, yeah, you don't need to write it a hundred times. You just link to it. But people don't want to link to each other because they want their own page with their own content, with their own ads, with yeah. their own traffic, with their own SEO. Yeah, and that's that's the ruin of, of journalism. Did yeah, you see? But it's that, also but it's you... also how journalists learn. I mean, the fastest way to get when you like, I mean, I'm sure you tell you, well, you don't teach 101, but in journalism 101, the fastest way. Okay. (laughs) Is to to get on a beat is start doing profiles. Is to go to the city council meeting, right? And start, start doing it from the ground up. It's evergreen content. It's profiles. It's how to's. It's those kind of things. And you do that so you can get. So you can learn <clears throat> and build the yeah. expertise. And I would argue that the one thing you left off isn't, it isn't knowing what your audience needs or wants, or isn't just that. It's the expertise that you build up over years of covering yes. a place or a topic. Well, and the nose for news, the nose for, I'm at a city council meeting. And oh, that's interesting. The commissioner doesn't want that sewer built. Doesn't he own a store right mm-hmm. next door and right. and then doing a, 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 a an investigative piece on it? That's right. You don't get that unless you actually go yeah. out and start doing reporting and go out in the field. And right. maybe that's doing reporting on something that's ostensibly pretty dull. I wish we had local reporters who were going to those things and looking for those stories. Um, but if you're sensible and smart, you're probably not going into journalism anymore, right? Gonzo journalism. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, says, yeah, I'm sensible and smart. No, but yeah, but you went into it years ago. Oh, but Andrew Today? does tell me that whenever someone, te- like when teenagers ask me about journalism, I'm like, don't do that. Well, I say that about <laughs> podcasting too and radio <laughs> and everything oh, I've okay. ever done. Or oh, the local. <laughs> but fortunately, my kids didn't listen to me, so it's okay. <laughs> the uh, local, uh, um, what do you call them? They do strikes. Reporters. Why? Reporters and, and trellis, journalism? a local trellis. No, trellis. why can I think of words? <laughs> Does it have two organizations? Word for everything. Papers, <laughs> union. Yeah. Is it Logs? union with union. Um, press Democrat and? Are the, they unionized? There's there's something going on. Oh, they with they are planning to unionize. Yeah. And see, you know, it's it, that, in some ways that's good and contribution. Yeah, and I mean, I they support. want to do this work that you're talking about, but. There hasn't been any pay in it. Right. You know, no, it's five bucks a meeting. There's been a, um, there was some stat that was listed like two or three days ago that talked about how those folks on those staffs are not even really making a living. Actually, I should point out (laughs) in Petaluma, the five bucks a meeting is what the city council members get paid. Literally five bucks a meeting. So they do that, I guess, because, you know, they want to be famous or they want to support the community. Um, you can't expect people to try to make a living doing that. But, you know, I feel sorry for anybody getting started these days. You, I don't, with the price of housing and the the low wages, I don't know how anybody survives. The guys, in this economy? The guys being that cover a our high school. Yeah, exactly. I, I love them and, and they're younger guys and I know they're busting their hump, but I feel bad for them from a financial standpoint. Yeah, our 20 year old's working at a grocery store making 20 bucks an hour, but he can't, that wouldn't pay. He'd have to have three roommates and I mean. Mm-hmm. That's the norm. Well, yeah, I guess I did when I was a kid. Anyway, uh, anyway, good to have you here. Thank, thank you for braving your uh, phobia. I survived that and the bridge. <laughs> I now have a fear of the letter X. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. What the hickety hawk is going on over there on the Twitter? It is now X.com. How much did he pay for that domain? 
Not enough because Microsoft and Facebook both own the trademark. <laughs> uh, and apparently he did, they didn't bother. They didn't. They Because I think, and this is Elon to a T, in his mind, he invented X because back before PayPal, mm. his company was right. X.com. He's right. owned X.com ever since. They merged with PayPal and it was his goal at the time to take uh, Cofinity, which is the company that was run by Peter Thiel and Max Levchin, merged with uh, X.com and they named the merged companies PayPal. But but even then, Elon wanted to make the everything app. He said, it's a trillion dollar idea. I'm going to call it X.com. And Levchin and Thiel basically forced him out because he was nuts. Mm -hmm. And, and if, was, if they think <laughs> they they said, no, 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 we're not going to do the everything company. We're going to do PayPal, which turned out to be the right thing. Yeah. Uh, and so he's always wanted to do this. And I'm sure in his mind, he thinks, well, I thought of this in 2000. So it's mine. Tough noogies. It's not how it works, right. unfortunately. Uh, he's already banned in uh, was it Sri Lanka uh, or Malaysia because you can't have a company with the word X, name X in the, in the company. Oh, wow, <laughs> it's an anti-porn restriction. Uh, no it's bizarre because no if you is there, huh? if you go to X.com and redirects you still to Twitter.com, but they did rename some Twitter things to X. It's a very weird, ill-planned conversion. So it's my, like I, if you let yeah. high school students be in charge yeah. of a branding exercise. I mean, that is what it's like. It's like letting just someone, your intern, take care of renaming the company. It's so. the high school students who are in detention. He uh, he had, and you probably saw the video, uh, he had uh, scissor trucks come out to start taking down the Twitter from the front of the building. But it turns out he didn't get a permit because again, I'm Elon Musk. I don't have to. And the police stopped him after they got TWITT down. So just on the front, it said, er, <laughs> emergency response. <laughs> er, er, er. I, I presume by now it's all down, but it's that's, this is Elon Musk in a nutshell. He's not a planner. Well, he, no, he took wait, a beloved brand. What if it wasn't necessarily about planning? What if it was, I can do whatever the hell I want? Well, it is, right? You know, let it me is. just take yeah, these letters is. down. Literally, that's what it is. I, I don't, their rules don't apply to me. He's famous for, and, and Linda Yaccarino, the new CEO, uh, kind of kissed his ring when she sent out her first memo saying, we're going to do this all from first principles. This is what Elon Stans say is his secret recipe for genius is instead of taking as given what people tell him he says we're going to break it down and we're going to start at first principles Aye. uh which it does that's not what that means what he really is saying is no we're going to do it my Bye -bye. way yeah. it doesn't matter what you say it doesn't matter i'm so sad because i had the little the, what do they call the ears from the browser the, the things, the little things there. I had tabs. The, well, no, but the no, thing, the little oh, the little icons. Yeah, Gravitar. the icon. There's a name for it. Yeah. What Navicon? Thank you, Navicon. So I still had the birds until this morning, and the birds are gone now. The birds are gone now. Yeah. I also there, there was one argument online that we should. Do you call it a a, a tweet a yeet? And I said that sounds like anal leakage. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's a just yeet. It's a fart. A yeet. Yeet. Yeah. No, I know. There's no. all sorts of things that if you had you know spent five minutes thinking yeah. about. You would have said, oh, well, you know, we, maybe we should plan this. Uh, just threw it in the air. Has there been any speculation on what this whole rebranding attempt is supposed to be about? Because I remember uh, part of the whole acquisition that he sort of kicked and dragged his feet on is he, he didn't like the brand of Twitter and mm -hmm. wanted to get in and clean things up, yada, yada, yada. And he did I, say very early on, I want to make it the everything Mm -hmm. site i wanted to do payment but you know that's like saying i want to be a billionaire okay but there's you know there's a few steps there's still some work along through. the way there's still some work <laughs> um i think i just it's and it's we are we live in interesting times it's unaccountable it's just here's a guy who has so much money i mean big deal he's he's worth so much that even losing it won't be 44 billion because he borrowed 13 billion from the bank. So even losing 31 billion dollars of his own money, it's not a big deal. You know what's driving me crazy now is that when Trump was in office, the media would take every single tweet of his and write an entire news story about it. It was and easy. And now they're doing that with Musk. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, yeah. His his new CEO 
So she's basically just been a bit of a puppet, not necessarily. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. she's just still going along with. In fact, what was her tweet? <laughs> she. <laughs> I gotta read this because it was just so. <laughs> when when it happened on Sunday, it happened over the weekend, um, and she tweeted, kind of, I guess, her vision for the future of uh, of Twitter. Um. I have to get through all the retweets of Elon. <laughs> Look at they have a big uh, X on the headquarters tonight. That's yeah. So that's all she's doing is just amplifying so his message. That's so oh, yeah. great. So here's um, here's uh, God. It's just it's it's business double speak if I can find it. Um, bunch of platitudes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love those. Yeah, I love those meetings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, really? Come on. It's an exceedingly rare thing in life or business that you get a second chance to make another big impression. Twitter made one massive impression and changed the way we communicate. Now sure. X will go further. Oh, transforming geez. the global town square. Um, okay. She could have stopped right there and I'd have been fine with that. Yeah. Still be For years, <laughs> fans and critics alike have pushed Twitter to a dream bigger, to innovate faster, to fulfill the great potential. X will do that and more. We've already started to see X take shape over the past eight months through our rapid feature launches, but we're just getting started. X will be the platform that can deliver, well, everything. Elon Musk and I are looking forward to working with our teams and every single one of our partners to bring X to the world. I don't think she respects him. She didn't say Mr. Uh, Mr. Musk, you would say Mr. Musk. If I respect you. If yeah. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> you, you don't call me Mr. Laporte, do you? No uh, <laughs> I, you know. Uh, <laughs> of course, just, Mr. Laporte. It's uh, <laughs> just bizarre what's going on over there. I don't know. I don't know what to what to say. Um I don't have it's a sad. problem I mean, this with is, rebranding. That's that seems to be. Uh, I do. If you have a brand that's really well known, if it's really well known for for bad stuff, you think? I that mean, Twitter considering brand, everybody was leaving Twitter because of its brand of 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 being a troll farm and, and misinformation. I, and no, so I would say they were leaving Twitter because it was a troll farm, mm -hmm. but the brand was somewhat intact. I think they left with some regret. And there are a lot of people mm -hmm. who stayed because it's Twitter. Yeah. Cause it's Twitter. Yeah. And I've heard a number of people say over on threads that, uh, <laughs> Of all the things that Elon did, this was the one that hurt the most. This yeah. is the one where there's where it's really like, yeah, I guess it's over. Yeah. No. Okay. But but there was a great essay I put in the rundown a couple of weeks ago by um, Andre mm. Brock Jr., who I quote often on the show, who talking about Black Twitter said, "I'm not leaving. I'm still not leaving. Still have an investment in this. Still right. created something here that um, we couldn't have created elsewhere." Okay. So it's not it's if not you over say, for everybody. If you say so. You I brought guess. up threads. What are your you, you still hanging in there with threads? I like thre uh, threads and blue sky both have promise. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, when we had uh, we were talking about threads with Dan Patterson, who was like almost shaky saying, but Meta is among the worst companies in the world. This is a company that mm -hmm. fostered, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, genocide among the Rohingya that 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 supported you know, uh, a junta, military junta in Myanmar. This is not a good company. Mm -hmm. And people are are just hiding that, you know, putting their heads in their sand when they're joining. I remember that. That was on Twit. Yeah, it was on Twit because they're, they're pretending it's not meta, you know. Oh, it's it's not meta. Well, once again, only Musk could make Zuck look good. I know, he did too, didn't he? He did, yeah. All right, so that's enough. Uh, the brand rebranding has happened. A few people uh, on Monday said, "Oh, he's just joking. He'll go back." And I think it's I think it's permanent now. Yeah, I think it is. Um, but I'm not going to refer to it as that. <clears throat> you can call it Twitter still. Always, always. I have to say, as the owner of the Twit trademark, which preceded the Twitter <laughs> trademark, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, that's to a be point. honest. Yeah, I saw that someone is... in our in our Discord brought up a little a funny tweet about you and. Basically saying, hey, way to go, Twit TV, and play in the long game. <laughs> <laughs> we hung in there. And winning the battle. I remember I, remember I mentioned this because, uh, you know, we were up, we were really upset when they named it uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed um, Ev. 
Ev, Ev Williams, uh, shortly after, I said, why'd you call it Twitter? Do you, you knew about Twit because you ran Odeo, which owned Twit. He said, yeah, we didn't think we didn't think either of us were going anywhere, so it was okay. <laughs> well, guess what, Ev? <laughs> Look who survived. Look who's still here. Look who's still standing. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> the real chief Anyway, twit, yeah, we, uh, we, we, we had a little battle with them over, uh, over that. Uh, mm -hmm. Elon, remember he called himself Chief Twit, yep. which was yeah, very yeah. annoying to me. No, he's Chief X. Chief X. That's good. <laughs> you be that. That's you strong. go be Chief X. <laughs> Enjoy. When no. we come back, a very special pick of the week, and we are going to celebrate. Stacy, you have a choice. You can have a melon bar, an egg bar, a music dance experience, or waffle party. Which would you prefer? Waffle party. All right, coming up, waffle party when fixed. we return. That was fixed. <laughs> And now it's time for Waffles! Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Yes, they're from Eggo Waffles, made in America's heartland. Oh, not your Eggo ones like Waffles have fine ingredients like <laughs> starch <laughs> and quartz. Ribo riboflavin. Riboflavin. <laughs> uh, enriched flour, sugar, leavening. Contains 2% or less of salt, fructose, eggs, whey, vanilla, beans, and extract. All the gluten you need. Them. Are they warm? Mm -hmm. yeah, Those are the skinny them. waffles. The, oh, really? You can't? The, the, is there a Yeah, difference? those are the original. Okay, mm. so we get the, the fluffy Belgian ones, but those are still decent. Why, oh. why are waffle? we having a waffle party? Well, because we have some sad news and we're trying to drown our sorrows <laughs> in ego. Oh, I thought we were celebrating. <laughs> well, we're not celebrating, no. really. But, no. you know, when you say goodbye to a beloved member of the crew, you sometimes have to have a party so you don't cry. Stacy got a job. I did. I, well, <laughs> Congratulations. So I I'm happy about that. And... I'm happy about that. But you're some changes coming. Tell us about. Yes. It. Do you want me to tell people or? Yeah. Well, if you I want to, it's I only. No. Not. I don't no, know. I mean, job, I, though. It's your life. Yeah. So I am going to. Kevin and I are stepping back for the Internet of Things podcast <gasps> and the weekly newsletter. Oh. So our last newsletter goes out Friday, and our last podcast will go out next Thursday. And as part of that. And I, I'm stopping because we're burnt out. I'm not stopping. I mean, it still was a decent business. It was fine, but I just, we were tired. We've been doing it. It's hard to do news alone for so long. And I got bored. Um, and so I got a new job and I am going to be a consultant for Consumer Reports. Oh, yay! Yay! Oh. That's, That's fantastic. Wonderful. But we did not. We did I not you, tell you all that? No, we knew you were leaving. We didn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I blame myself, frankly. But that's, I was hoping for Stacy's Waffle House. He that's, probably, that's he probably like didn't best. read the email. That's a huge relief. <laughs> so <laughs> you're no, going to work for I, Consumer yeah. Reports. That's great. Oh, yeah, I'm going. So I'm going to be a consultant for them, and I'm trying my hand at public policy to advocate for Perfect. better cybersecurity Yay. and privacy rights. Needs to be done related to. These IP. are all things that our friend Craig Newmark cares about deeply. He's Formerly on the board, Consumer Reports loves that, loves cybersecurity. Um, I'm sure Craig is cheering right now for you, though we're losing so, you, and that's not worthy of cheering. Yeah, so I might come back for on occasion I for like, in, yeah, in like, but you know, we, we know uh, not technically Nicholas de Leon, who writes about technology, he's a staffer, is allowed to be on. So uh, I hope they would allow you to come on from time to time. I know you're really sick of me, but if you feel like it and I'm not here, <laughs> you can come on the show. We'd love yeah, to. Yeah, no, it's it's more like I feel new start. So I won't be a I'm not a journalist anymore. Yeah, new under start. this. Yeah, I know That's I can understand that. Okay, so yeah. So what are you if you're not a journal you're not I I'm advocating for public policy, but like to me the distinction is I won't be covering like I could never advocate for consumer rights in the consumer reports position on something that like Google is doing and right. then call Google and write about it. Yes. You know, that's, that's, that makes sense. And one of the things that I love about consumer reports is their ethical standards are as high as it yeah. gets. I mean, they really are the standard. 
They take no ads. That's what I love about yeah, them too. Yeah, I'm really happy to. Are you going to be going to visit Yonkers a lot? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Fifty million dollar headquarters. <laughs> I hear they have a nice hotel inside for only ninety nine dollars. And all the waffles you can eat. Well, we're going to so, really. So uh, that's what I'm doing. We're going to miss you. I'll, I'll miss you guys. Uh, we're going to miss you. Congratulations, though. I think it's a it's a great use of your. Um, that's just awesome. Strong knowledge and moral. Oh, Joe Esposito for the win. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Joe Esposito. Yeah. Beautiful Joe. Yeah. So, hey, congratulations. That's really fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we will miss you, but I do hope you'll come back from time to time. We're not going to, uh, at this time, replace Stacy, uh, but it's an opportunity to have people like Joan Donovan, uh, Kathy Gellis, Glenn Fleischman, Mike Elgin rotate in in that position. And, you know, maybe eventually, we'll, if we could find somebody as half as good as Stacy, we'll, we'll hire him. But uh, we're going to really miss you. You've been, I, and by the way, yeah. I've, I did a little search and I found the first time you were on our network, which was ages ago. Uh, August 11th, 2010, you were a guest with Jeff and Gina Trapani on a show mm -hmm. called Carrier Humping Net Neutrality Surrender Monkeys. <laughs> so, so who, could, who could forget that? Such a great that, title. That, so that, I guess, was the first time we met. And then you were on Tech News Weekly and so forth, but then Gina Trapani moved on. And you joined us May 25th, 2016, starting with episode 354 this week oh. in Google and have been with us for quite some time. Wow. That's seven years plus. Multiply every week times four hours. Boy, that's a yeah. lot of life. Yeah. 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 So we're, I'm, wow. she says, yeah. <laughs> we never, <laughs> like, whoa. We Boy, never did, did really get that, that punching machine built into the monitor there, but we did at no. least get Ant. No, we, we have an AI. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we have an Ant to do that. Uh, I would it, like to have I would like to have an old home week show with both Gina and Stacy. I would love way. to do that, and may, that's actually a really good idea. So, yeah. J did, Jason, did you call it the old ho week show? <laughs> home, home, oh. home, <laughs> home. Jesus, <laughs> where is your mom? Jeff, you're ruining it for all Jeff. of us. Jeez, <laughs> I did not expect that from you. <laughs> Stacy, do you? <laughs> Oh gosh! Do you have a thing Home of the week? Week, <laughs> actually, I do. it's it's appropriately oh, no. named. Yeah, the Homey Pro. The homie it's Pro. the Homey Pro. This is um, we did a review on, and I, I showed you the Homey Bridge. I don't have the Homey Pro right now because I'm sending everything back. Kevin actually tested this one. Um, this is the fancier version of something I showed y'all a couple weeks back. Oh, it's yeah, a yeah. three hundred and ninety nine dollar smart home hub. It's got Zigbee. It's got C Wave. It'll have Matter. It'll have like. Uh, weird 1900 megahertz protocols and infrared and thread. It has thread. Or and will. thread and yeah, yeah. It does. It does have the thread radio because it's um, anyway. So the key here is this is made by a European company that's very focused on privacy. So when you buy it, there is an option to pay a one dollar a month or ninety nine cents a month subscription free for cloud backup for everything but otherwise everything runs locally in your home and will forever nice or until it breaks does this work um, with home assistant what is what is the software so i don't i think home assistant and homey pro may talk it's it kind of it is a home assistant it has its own software it's, okay it has its own software and so it's and its software is really nice to use they have on the web they have a, a gui a graphical interface for like creating what they call flows and they have a lot of good it's not just if then statements you've got else statements you can kind of join a bunch of stuff together it's a very powerful hub if you're still into hubs kevin was able to use it with his casetas his hughes sono speakers did not work according to his review and you should read his review on stacy on iot.com with a slag lock the ecobee the nano leafs the go v electric kettle he has a lot of crap. The Wise cameras, <laughs> the Eve home devices, the Logitech video doorbell, or any of his smart plugs. Yeah, with all that's his matter. Like some of that is thread. Like he's got a lot more thread stuff in his house yeah. now. Um, so some of that will work over time. I, it worked really well with a good number of my devices. Okay. But yeah, you should always, with any hub, you should check. Um, but you can also use it and write your own drivers and then launch it on the Homey App Store. So if you're you're feeling 
snazzy that way you could do that. It has an API. Anyway. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice platform. That. Yeah. I don't um, know how we're going to survive without your IoT input. I, because uh, honestly, I, I've, I've always said, you know, I have to ask Stacy before we do this. Mm -hmm. you know? um, oh, and y'all asked, book club is still on for oh, good. Is it September 1st. Yes. What is, oh, what yes. It's September something. I, I can't remember. I think we moved it, didn't we? Just because, uh, mm -mm. let me check our <laughs> club twit events. Here. It's either August 31st or September something. <laughs> No, you're right. It, it's it's the end of the month. Oh gosh, I can't remember. You're the man. Right, do you guys have a like calendar? Seven, yeah, like we do. Seven, seven events. Yet. Here we go. Home theater geeks photo walk. There it is. August thirty first, nine a.m. You'll still be doing that translation state, but this will be your last one. We haven't really talked about it. Um, you're more I than still welcome like to keep the doing book club. Oh, yeah, let's take keep that. So, take that sale. Yeah, oh. but I don't. Yeah. Well, I'll I like defer, talking about books. I'll defer to you, and if you're, uh, if I'll say this: I definitely need you because I don't know any of these books, <laughs> and I only get introduced well, to them because you bring it's them Stacey's up. Stacy's book club, and, not Ant's right. book club. <laughs> Ant's book club would be a comic book; it'd be something else. It wouldn't be this. Oh no, it'd actually be more like ESPN and Fox Sports. <laughs> one. <laughs> Let's all sit down with Ant and watch the NFL together. Actually, I'd love to do that with you. That'd be fun. Uh, that might be another. There you club go, event. watch party. Yeah, watch party. Stacy, do come back and uh, and do the book club if you wish. We'd love that, uh, but I'll let you decide that later. We're really going to miss you. It's uh, yep, it, yep. you've made yeah, this show you guys. Uh, your 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 expertise both in IoT and CPUs mm -hmm. has really made spectrum. a difference. Yeah, we don't know nothing. Spectrum. So getting somebody on <laughs> like, no more spectrum millimeter Chips. wave. Like, I wave bet you're happy not to be talking about thread and matter for the rest of your life. <laughs> to be honest, uh, that's great. I, I I, I'm be, thrilled. But... I'm thrilled. You think you'll be going to Washington to talk to members of Congress and lobbying them and trying to get some good stuff going? I hope you do that. They I'm must give it a try. They must have a policy arm and a, and lobbying arm. Yeah. See well, they you. do. Yeah. They have a policy. So I'll, I'm working for their innovation lab. Nice. And then doing the policy where I'm working for both their policy and their innovation side. That's great. So. Uh, as Real Bodhi says Plaza. in our IRC, it's really hard to understand why Stacy would leave a show with a grumpy old guys on it. But uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Oh, y'all are, are fun to gonna We're going to totally, I'm not totally old. miss you. Yeah, you're right. Okay. You just I love all you you old guys at Ant. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to have grumpy moments, but that's I'm not the name old. of the Don't new show. On me yet. People say, "Why you call it this week in Google?" So we're going to change it to Ant and the Old Guys <laughs> next, starting next week. Thank you, Stacy. He is a fan of our newest Ooh. Ask member. Ah, oh. and that is the big announcement. That's important. We've been waiting because we had to get confirmation from her management. She writes for the information, and the information has given her a green light. Ladies and gentlemen, our newest official full-time cast member, Paris Martineau. Yay! Craig Newmark's favorite guys? host. Wow, thanks, Craig. <laughs> what does Craig think about your song? He, oh, he loves it. Insisted loves it. on it. <laughs> yes. yes, that's good. He was. We got to do this again. He once appeared on the show in the circle above Leo. Yeah, he did. We, as we had the show. So. Oh, that's mm -hmm. very smart. I do think every once in a while you just need to have somebody there to kind of keep you in check. Oh, that's what he does. That's what our pretty much does. everybody's smart. here to keep me in check. That's the whole point of this show. <laughs> And uh, when we when we had to replace Stacy, we didn't want to. She got a great job at Consumers Reports. She's working policy for them. Uh, we needed to find somebody who was equally feisty, mm -hmm. and I think we found yeah, her. She is. Yeah, she's gonna keep yes. me in place. <laughs> hey, but, he, but, but young lady. You didn't come on time today, and it was noted in your permanent record. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Listen, you know, it is, I blame uh, Steve Jobs and the entire Mac and MacBook ecosystem, oh, frankly. Wow. <laughs> I had to reset my computer. So, you know, that this might be actually crazy. a good thing for a podcast called This Week in Google. Very nice. Yeah. 
Very nice. Hey, here's a big you know, story. So I, just, I just want to say, well, well, well I'm, I'm so, ha- as, as the guy who won't leave, who never leaves the party, I just want to say how happy I am that Paris is uh-huh. here. It's, it's just Jeff it's has been with the so, show since we started in 2009, 14. He's trying to get rid of me. He's, He's tried everything. It hasn't worked. Yeah. We, well, we thought you'd be dead by now. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. We, we, Josh, Jeff and I are brothers from a different mother and we, uh, we act yeah. like brothers, right? There's a little sibling, yes, we do. sibling rivalry going on here. But no, I love this panel. And I think we yeah, really, great. we, it, I'm so thrilled. We, it's uh, clicking. Yeah. We've got Paris joining us. So thank you, Paris, for putting up with us. Thanks for having me, guys. It. Now, I uh, hope you don't get sick of me too soon. Nope. No, you never going to nope. happen. <laughs> Pretty much people get sick <laughs> of us long yeah, before. It's usually not the way around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was so great. That, I mean, it, it, look, replacing Stacy was not easy. As you can see, she's fantastic. I, I hear from her once in a while. She's doing great. She still does a book club in Club Twit. Uh, but we're so glad to welcome Paris Martineau as a new co-host and I think she's really been great for uh, this week in Google and I look forward to 2024 with Paris and Jeff and we're still looking to fill a, 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 that third slot um, Guy Pruitt also left uh, in the year we had to lay him off but we would like to uh, have somebody uh, a little younger than me and Jeff to keep Paris company so stay tuned uh, for that maybe somebody who likes waffles I don't know I, <laughs> that would be nice um, I have to say one of the things that is really for me, very important is the ability to bring on these great people and to pay them. Uh, you may not even know that we do pay them, but it is part of the cost of business at Twit. We want to make sure our regular contributors uh, are compensated for their time. I think that's only fair. Uh, unfortunately, times are tough. I mentioned we had to lay off Ant. We laid off Jason Howell. We laid off one of our great editors, Victor Bognat. That was heart-wrenching. I didn't want to do it, but I can't ask them to work for free. And we didn't have the money to pay them. I don't want that to happen ever again. With your help, it won't. Now, I'm not trying to turn this into a Sarah McLaughlin uh, weep fest here, but <laughs> we do need your help to survive into the new year. But it's easy to help, and we've made it something I think valuable to you. We created Club Twit. Here's how you can support us join us at Club Twit for $7 a month. That makes up a huge part of our income. In fact, it's enough that we can give you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus shows we don't do anywhere else. Uh, shows like Stacy's Book Club, which will continue into the new year. Shows uh, like Hands on Macintosh and Hands on Windows, plus special events. You just saw that escape box we did. And my favorite benefit, the Club Twit Discord, a place where Club Twit members gather to talk about everything geeks are into. You get all of that for just 7 bucks a month. I think that's a pretty good deal. But the best part is it makes a huge difference to our bottom line. If you're not a member, please, can I beg of you, join Club Twit. It would be a great gift for the holiday season. We've got family plans, corporate plans too. Twit.tv slash Club Twit. All right. I'm not going to harangue you. I just thought I'd bring it up. Thank you. I really do appreciate all the support. It makes it possible to, to, to do what we do here. What a year it has been, and I cannot wait to see what 2024 brings to this week in Google. I hope you will join us. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. You've got your various Yuletide fires <laughs> in various places. You could be at the beach. You could be in virtual reality. Is that a Minecraft head over there? I think it is. You could be in the sand. You could be in the snow, wherever you are. Uh, hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twit, which costs seven bucks a month. Or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of home theater geekitude.